If you've ever lived in the American South, you'll know that the food down there has its own unique identity, and it's absolutely delicious too. If you haven't tried these, well, bless your heart. These are the Southern comfort foods you absolutely need to try. One of the most popular dishes to have come out of New Orleans are beignets. These airy treats are made with usually square pieces of yeast dough that are fried in hot oil until they puff up. They're then generously dusted with powdered sugar and eaten straight away, preferably accompanied by a mug of café au lait. Arguably, the best place to enjoy a beignet is in New Orleans, preferably at the Café du Monde, in the city's French Quarter. But if getting around is proving a little difficult right now, then you're in luck, because they're not difficult to make at home either. Just make sure to turn them often in the oil and be careful not to overcook them. Biscuits and gravy is a hearty breakfast dish that you'll find in restaurants and homes across the South. The soft, flaky biscuits are smothered in white gravy, which is made from pork sausage drippings, milk, and flour. The gravy is seasoned with black pepper and typically includes pieces of the breakfast sausage too, making it even more flavorful. The good news is that sausage gravy is easy to make at home, and there are plenty of different recipes available online. Failing that, you could pick up some of the ready-mix packets at the grocery store, although you'll really want to try the homemade stuff at least once. As for the biscuits, if making them from scratch just isn't feasible, the Pillsbury ones you pop open and bake will work just fine. Just don't let a southerner catch you taking those shortcuts. Okay, so boiled peanuts sound kind of bland compared to roasted peanuts, but don't judge a book by its cover. These are actually really good. They're made by taking raw peanuts and boiling them for hours in salty water over a fire until the shells turn soggy. These peanuts are then sold at roadside stands all over the South, where residents and tourists alike enjoy them, often with bottles of Coke or sweet tea. For what it's worth, it's usually best to munch on boiled peanuts outdoors, so you can easily spit out their soggy shells, because it's nearly impossible to crack them open with your hands. Of course, some people opt to eat these peanuts whole, shells and all, but that's one heck of an acquired taste. Okay. For centuries, people have been making use of their stale bread by creating their own kinds of bread pudding. Often made with bread, cream, eggs, sugar, spices, and raisins, modern bread pudding is the heartiest of comfort foods and should do wonders for warming you up on a cold and dreary day. So how do you make bread pudding even better? Just add bourbon. In the South, people often add a few dashes of bourbon to a number of different recipes, and bread pudding is one of them. The bourbon combines with the cream and sugar to create a thick, warm sauce that is drizzled over the warm bread pudding right before serving. Brunswick stew is a hearty, tomato-based stew that's hugely popular in the South. It typically features lima beans, corn, and other vegetables, along with some sort of meat. The base includes barbecue sauce and a little hot sauce for some heat, too. Early versions of the stew use squirrel meat, but if you're not brave enough to keep it authentic, you can always substitute the squirrel with rabbit, chicken, or just about anything else. Virginians claim the stew originated in their Brunswick County, while Georgians will tell you it was first made in the city of Brunswick, Georgia. Wherever it came from, however, it's a truly delicious comfort food that'll easily take the chill out of a wintry day. Grab some cornbread, or loaf of any crusty bread for that matter, to sop up all the southern goodness. Fried catfish is a simple dish that's available at most restaurants that serve fish in the South. And the good news is that catfish is pretty good for you, since it's high in omega-3 fatty acids and low in mercury. If you can't find it at a restaurant near you, however, your grocery store may offer farmed catfish, which is also typically clean and nutritious. Catfish is easy enough to prepare. Dip it in milk, dredge it in seasoned cornmeal, and fry it in hot oil. It only takes a few minutes to get it golden brown on the outside and beautifully flaky on the inside. Add a squirt of lemon and a side of rice, then start chowing down. Pure bliss. For a truly comforting meal, there's nothing like a bowl of chicken and dumplings. If you aren't in the South, where you can find them at most sit-down restaurants, you can try making these at home by dropping biscuit dough into cooking soup. And though they aren't difficult to make, dumplings are a kind of art form, and they can take some time to perfect. You don't want your dumplings undercooked and wet inside, but you also don't want them so overcooked that they start falling apart in the broth. Stick them with a toothpick, and if it comes out clean, you're good to go. Chicken fried steak, sometimes called country fried steak, is made from a tenderized cube steak which is battered like fried chicken, pan-fried, and topped with white gravy. While you can find chicken fried steak in an array of southern states, it's most closely associated with Texas. And as with most things, it's always bigger in Texas, too. In fact, at Lulu's Cafe in San Antonio, you can find a 21-ounce version of this dish. And it's not a coincidence that Lulu's is also home to the famous three-pound cinnamon roll, too. That's just how they roll down there, as it were. For your next Super Bowl party, why not forego the wings and serve up a batch of southern fried chicken gizzards instead? Believe it or not, your guests might thank you for it. Okay, so you probably don't want to think too much about what a gizzard is, but that'll be easy enough to do once you realize how good it tastes. You can cook gizzards in a number of ways, but it's best to boil them first and then coat them before deep frying. Throw in a little hot sauce, and soon you won't be able to get enough of these tender little morsels. 
Chicken pot pie is an iconic Southern comfort food that, when done right, simply can't be beaten. And done right doesn't mean grabbing a pie from your grocer's freezer section. A flaky golden brown homemade crust is essential for this Southern specialty. Inside, the chicken needs to be moist and plentiful. The vegetables must be neither too firm nor too mushy, and the gravy creamy but not goopy. Is it a challenge to find a good chicken pot pie? Yes, but it really is worth it. And if you don't trust restaurants to get it right, you could always experiment with different recipes at home. It might take some time to perfect, but once you land on just the right method, you'll never want to cook anything else. Ambrosia didn't actually originate in the South, but you'll still find it at plenty of Southern potlucks. This variety of fruit salad typically contains mandarin oranges, mini marshmallows, pineapple chunks, and shredded coconut mixed with some sort of dairy ingredient. Some people use mayonnaise, while others use cream cheese, plain yogurt, or whipped cream. You might also find some potluckers add in bananas, cherries, and nuts, too. Because why the heck not, right? Think of it like a banana split without the ice cream. And then maybe throw in some ice cream anyway. If you live north of the Mason-Dixon line, you've probably never experienced chitlins before, and you are most definitely missing out. Chitlins are made from the large intestines of a hog, and they need to be carefully cleaned and prepared before cooking, for obvious reasons. Typically, the intestines are soaked in baking soda and water, rinsed several times, turned inside out and cleaned by hand before being boiled for several hours. And just in case you're doing this at home, be warned. Chitlins smell truly disgusting while they are boiling, so put some onion and lemon in the water to tone down the odor. After they are boiled, batter and deep fry them. Then serve them up with a little hot sauce. Though Pennsylvania has its own version of chow chow, it's actually completely different from the southern variety. In the south, chow chow is a cabbage-based type of pickled relish that incorporates onions, peppers, tomatoes, and a whole lot of seasoning. This stuff is often used as a topping for hot dogs and hamburgers, but you could also use it to top your cornbread, fish cakes, beans, and even your mashed potatoes. In fact, you can put it on just about anything. It'll taste great no matter what. Collard greens are a leafy green vegetable not completely unlike turnip or mustard greens, and are most often associated with soul food. They can be bitter and tough if not cooked properly. But if they're done right, then they'll make the perfect side dish to any southern meal. After washing them well, chop the leaves into inch-long pieces, then simmer them in water. People often throw a ham bone into the pot, along with garlic and onion for a little extra flavor. But one of the best additions to collard greens has got to be bacon. You can never go wrong with bacon. Red-eye gravy is made with the grease and drippings of pan-fried ham and black coffee. And yeah, okay, that might sound kind of gross, but this stuff really is amazing. The coffee is first used to deglaze the pan, but is then combined with the grease on a one-to-one -one ratio, resulting in a highly unusual yet genuinely delicious gravy. You can pour the simple gravy over your ham, potatoes, rice, or grits, but many folk choose to simply sop it up with biscuits. Crawfish, crayfish, crawdads, or mud bugs, whatever you call them in your neck of the woods, these freshwater crustaceans are some of the tastiest seafood out there. Of course, you can eat crawfish meat dipped in drawn butter, just like you would with lobster, but if you ever find yourself in the Cajun areas of Louisiana, do yourself a favor and seek out crawfish etouffee. This is when crawfish meat in a spicy roux is poured over rice for an amazing dish with a seriously deep flavor. As simple as it sounds, you don't want to make fried chicken and waffles at home. Instead, hop on over to one of the South's many awesome waffle establishments or diners, the places that really get it right. If you haven't experienced chicken and waffles before, it might seem like an unusual combination, but it really does work. Crispy on the outside and juicy on the inside, perfectly seasoned fried chicken makes a heavenly partner for a plate of buttery waffles. This is also an incredibly versatile dish and should work great for breakfast, lunch, dinner, or a late night snack. Fried green tomatoes is a simple southern side dish that packs a big punch. The key when making fried green tomatoes is to avoid them turning into a soft, soggy mess. Check your unripened tomatoes are suitably firm, then cut them into 3 8 to half inch slices and soak them for an hour in a mixture of buttermilk and hot sauce. Dredge the tomatoes in a combination of cornmeal and cornstarch, then fry them in bacon grease over medium-high heat until they're crispy on the outside. But be careful not to overcook them. You can dip them in just about anything, but a remoulade with mayo, hot sauce, horseradish, and Cajun spices would be the ultimate authentic accompaniment. I miss the smell of coffee <laughs> and bacon frying. Mm. Yeah. Oh, what I wouldn't give for a plate of fried green tomatoes. If you're looking for something a little out of the ordinary to fill you up, consider jambalaya. A favorite in Louisiana, jambalaya is a mix of sausage, chicken, seafood, and vegetables, cooked in the same pot with rice and stock. Creole jambalaya contains tomatoes, while the Cajun version does not. Both, of course, are extremely tasty. Jambalaya. In Cajun jambalaya, in rural Louisiana, you might also find a variety of game meats used, as well as alligator, crayfish, and even turtle. All Southerners know that everything's better when you fry it, and okra is no exception. To make these golden nuggets of veggie goodness for yourself, slice your okra, dip it in buttermilk, and then coat it in cornmeal and season before deep frying. 
The best thing here is that okra is seriously good for you since it's low in calories and contains a great deal of fiber, potassium, calcium, and vitamins. The hot brown sandwich originated at the restaurant in the Brown Hotel in Louisville, Kentucky in the 1920s, and it's still served there today. The hot brown is traditionally an open-faced turkey sandwich with tomatoes covered in Mornay sauce, which is baked, topped with bacon, and then broiled. Some people say it was originally created with peaches rather than tomatoes. Others swear it's a great hangover cure. Pretty much everyone agrees, however, that it's a genuine, bona fide, once-in-a-lifetime sandwich. If you've ever eaten at Long John Silver's, you've probably had their hush puppies. But the ones you can get at a southern restaurant or fish fry are a heck of a lot better than the Long John variety. Hush puppies are basically balls of fried cornmeal batter that are often served alongside fried fish or shrimp. Though hush puppies aren't exactly complex, they're kind of like potato chips, and that it's virtually impossible to eat just one. Southern pecan pie made with a splash of high-quality bourbon is hard to beat. If you don't have a restaurant in your area that makes a killer pecan pie, though, it's not too difficult to make at home. However, you'll want to experiment with the amounts of corn syrup, brown sugar, and bourbon you're using until you find just the right combination. And sure, you might end up having to bake a load of pies to get it right, but who's gonna complain about that? If you aren't from the South, then there's a chance you aren't too familiar with pimento cheese. Basically, pimento cheese is a mixture of cheese mixed with mayo and pimento peppers. It can be spread on crackers, stuffed into celery, and scooped onto chips. Some people add it to scrambled eggs or grits, while others use it as a relish for brats, burgers, and hot dogs. In Louisiana, they spice it up by adding hot sauce or cayenne pepper into the mix. But the possibilities for pimento cheese are endless, and once you start incorporating it into your recipes, you're never going to want to stop. Pot liquor is the liquid that's left behind after you boil green vegetables. So what do you do with it other than pour it down the sink? Well, some people save pot liquor and use it in place of stock in their next stew or soup while others pour it over rice or potatoes. But the best thing to do with pot liquor is drink it. It might seem a little odd, but that way you can reap all the nutrients that have boiled out of the greens. Red beans and rice is a staple dish in Louisiana Creole cuisine. Traditionally, families took the ham hocks, bones, vegetables, and beans that were left over from Sunday dinner and used them to create a scrumptious dish of spicy beans that were served with rice the next day. Cayenne pepper, Tabasco sauce, and other seasonings can turn up the heat on this hearty meal, while some people like to add in sausage or other meats. Here's a tip, though. If you boil bones to make a broth for the base, you'll get exactly the flavor you want without having to add anything else. Gumbo is sometimes confused with jambalaya, but it's not the same thing at all. The key difference is that with jambalaya, the rice is cooked with the rest of the ingredients. With gumbo, however, the rice is cooked separately. Gumbo is a stew created with a strong, robust stock, sausage, shrimp, other shellfish, and the holy trinity of vegetables, bell peppers, celery, and onions. The most important aspect of home cooking a great gumbo is perfecting the roux that's used as its base. Or you could just head down to New Orleans and get someone to make it for you. Your call. Where's my mac and cheese? Everyone knows that real macaroni and cheese doesn't come out of a box, nor does it come with a packet of powdered cheese. Real good old-fashioned southern mac and cheese is a completely separate dish altogether. It's often created with a combination of cheeses. And you can use anything from smoked cheddar and Monterey Jack to Gruyere and Velveeta. Southern recipes usually feature heavy whipping cream, evaporated milk, or both. And the dish is baked in the oven until the sauce is creamy and the top is crispy. No matter how much you love macaroni and cheese, you've never really tried it until you've had it in the South. You might have seen sweet potato casserole at Thanksgiving dinner and passed it by. But it's time to stop sleeping on this delicious dish. Though some folks love it topped with charred marshmallows, others prefer a topping made with brown sugar and pecans. Give it a go, and you'll soon realize that this often overlooked Thanksgiving side dish deserves a place on your dinner table all through the year. British food isn't exactly the first thing people go to when they think of world-class cuisine. But forget what you've heard about it. Truth is, the UK is home to some of the tastiest dishes around. These are iconic British foods you need to try before you die. You won't find many dishes simpler than bangers and mash. It consists of a few sausages, or one Cumberland sausage, served with a hefty dollop of mashed potatoes. More often than not, gravy will be involved. And that's pretty much it. Usually, of course, things turn out a little fancier than that. The sausages can be made from lamb or beef rather than the standard pork. The mash can be spruced up with cream or mustard, while a handful of extra side additions might be included too, depending entirely on the preference of the person making it. The first thing to know about the bacon sandwich is that British bacon isn't the same as American bacon. 
The British variant is leaner and meatier than the U.S. version, since it comes from the loin of the pig rather than the belly. Some would even say the British stuff is tastier, too. That's why, in the U.K., it seems far less crazy to stick a few rashers of bacon between two buttered slices of bread, slather it in ketchup or brown sauce, and just go to town on it. The bacon sandwich, or buddy as northerners call it, is the ultimate quick-fix breakfast. Some people like to spruce them up with fancy breads or fried eggs, but most of the time it's made with nothing more than bacon, bread, and sauce. And what I think makes a really good bacon sandwich is smoky bacon. I love that smokiness and I like it quite crispy. And that's just the way it should be. The Full English is probably the most well-known breakfast in the UK. Although people make slight alterations to the dish based on their own preferences, a proper full English should include at least some combination of sausage, bacon, eggs, tomatoes, mushrooms, toast, baked beans, and black pudding. Other regions in the UK have their own variations, too. In Scotland, for example, a full breakfast might include haggis or oatcakes, while in Wales you might find it includes cockles or lava bread. Although most British hotels and B&Bs will offer a full English breakfast, the best ones tend to be served in grubby little greasy spoons and should cost no more than a fiver. Don't bother trying anything too fancy with this one, you'll only be disappointed. One of the many pies and pastries to be found in British cuisine, Beef Wellington, is made up of filet steak coated with pâté and duxelles, which is a kind of mix of mushrooms, onions, and herbs. This steak is then wrapped in ham and baked in a pastry. Many recipes use pâté de foie gras, but this particular ingredient tends to be a little controversial, to say the least. This is another one of those delectably hearty dishes that you'll most often find served in pubs up and down the UK, though it's not too hard to make at home. If nothing else, it's a great use of any leftovers from a Sunday roast. One of Britain's more notorious foods, black pudding, is a kind of blood sausage made from pork blood, fat, and cereal, which is then spiced with mint, thyme, and pennyroyal. Taste-wise, imagine eating a particularly bready kind of sausage, and you're probably halfway there. Although it's a regional specialty in the West Midlands and Northwest of England, black pudding is a staple part of the full English, so you can expect to find it on breakfast tables around the country. It'd be very easy to give the Chip Buddy a bad rap, but that wouldn't be very fair, because this is by far one of the best comfort foods Britain has to offer. The idea is simple. You heap a load of thick-cut chips, french fries for Americans, onto a slice of buttered bread, throw a little sauce on if you like, stick another slice of bread on top, and then you're good to go. Most often found in the north of England, the Chip Buddy is a mainstay food of the British working class. Depending on where you are in the country, and on what kind of bread you're using, you might hear it referred to as a chip sandwich, chip roll, chip bap, chip cob, chip sarnie, or something else entirely. Doesn't matter what it's called, though, it still tastes great. At first glance, chicken tikka masala may seem like an Indian dish, but it's believed by many to have been created by South Asian immigrants in the United Kingdom, with one account placing its origins in Glasgow. This is disputed, however, and others claim it is simply a modification of an existing Indian recipe. Either way, chicken tikka masala is one of the country's most iconic and best-loved dishes. It consists of small pieces of chicken that have been marinated in spices and yogurt before being oven-roasted and stirred into a tomato-based curry sauce. It's usually served with rice and naan, and is served in pretty much every single one of the UK's many, many, many Indian restaurants and takeaways. Also known as shepherd's pie, cottage pie basically consists of ground meat, such as beef or lamb, cooked in an onion gravy, topped with mashed potatoes, and baked in an oven. Often, it includes other ingredients, such as peas or carrots, and if it doesn't, then you'll more than likely find them served on the side. Many British people will remember cottage pie as a staple school dinner, and you can also find it on the menu in most pubs. But anyone will tell you that the best cottage pie is always homemade. Named for the ultra-posh and highly controversial school from which it originated, Eaton Mess is a traditional dessert made up of strawberries, meringue, and whipped cream. Some recipes include other fruits such as raspberries and blackberries, but as long as you've got something fruity to play off against that cream and the crumbly meringue, you'll be just fine. 
this one is best enjoyed at the height of summer. Fish and chips is one of the world's most famous British dishes, and for good reason, too. It's basically fish fried in batter served up with the thickly cut chips, usually doused in salt and vinegar, with a little ketchup or some mushy peas on the side. The fish itself is most often cod or haddock, but other kinds are occasionally used. Although you'll find fish and chips pretty much everywhere in the UK, proper seaside chippies almost always do it best. The fish is always freshly caught, the chips will be made just right, and the setting is invariably just right for the occasion. Put short, this is the ultimate British culinary experience. Game pies are traditional English pastries that are best known for having become really quite over the top during the Victorian era. Although recipes for game pies have changed over the years, modern variations tend to contain meats such as venison, rabbit, pheasant, pigeon, or boar, and are mixed in with garlic, shallots or onions, bacon, pork, as well as a range of different herbs and spices. Unlike the Victorians, you needn't worry about birds stuffed within birds or crazy fancy pastry patterns. Simplicity is key here. Simplicity and a good ale, that is. The jam roly-poly is pretty much just a Swiss roll with a better name. It's a pudding made from suet dough, which is spread with jam and rolled up before baking. You'll sometimes find it dusted with sugar or served with cream, custard, or ice cream, but it's a nice enough treat no matter how you have it. Modern versions often use sponge cake, like a Swiss roll, rather than suet, partly because it's easier to get hold of, and partly because it's a little more palatable. Either way, it doesn't matter, just so long as it's bursting with fruit jam. Okay, yes, jellied eels might seem like something they'd serve you in hell, and well, yeah, they're really not that great. This dish is prepared by chopping up eels, boiling them in stock, then allowing it to cool and set into a jelly. Just to make things even better, they are also eaten cold. Jellied eels are slimy, salty, and totally gross, too. But they have a genuinely fascinating past, and trying a bowl of them in a proper East End establishment really does feel like you're tasting history. A kipper is basically a split herring that has been pickled and smoked, and although they're eaten all over Europe, they're particularly popular in Britain. Nowadays, they're eaten as a breakfast food, although they're not quite as popular as they once were. So don't take them for granted if you do get hold of some. You might just be surprised how tasty they can be. It might be a shock to discover that the Knickerbocker glory comes from the same country as jellied eels and black pudding, but it's true. Once sold almost exclusively out of the country's many ice cream vans, Knickerbocker glories are basically elaborate ice cream sundaes made up of vanilla ice cream, strawberries, whipped cream, syrup, sprinkles, and a wafer, all served in a tall glass. Sometimes they might include chopped nuts, more syrups, chocolate, or anything else any kid could ever want. And yes, they really do taste as good as they look. The Battenberg is easily one of Britain's most visually striking desserts, but it's definitely something of an acquired taste. The inner section is nice enough, being made up of a light sponge held together with jam. The outer layer, however, is made from marzipan, a thick fondant-like confection made up of sugar, honey, and almonds. Marzipan has got a genuinely unique flavor to it, but it's not for everyone. In fact, a 2019 survey found that it was one of the UK's most hated foods. Still, no one would blame you if you swapped it out for a little fondant instead. Funnily enough, mince pies really aren't what they sound like. Although they did indeed contain minced meat once upon a time, today they're a sweeter treat served exclusively at Christmas. The modern mince pie is a sweet pastry dusted with sugar, filled with a concoction of dried fruits and spices. They're pretty much bite-sized and are served in their millions every year. For many Brits, these things literally taste like Christmas. Thanks in part to the stratospheric rise of the fast food bakery chain Greggs, the humble pasty has become one of the UK's favorite lunch snacks. Originating in Cornwall, pasties are usually made by wrapping a filling in a pie-like pastry and then baking them. 
Cornish pasties always contain beef, potato, swede, and onion, but countless different variations exist, including chicken, pork, turkey, cheese, vegetables, and more. As with anything, for the best pasties, you'll need to go straight to the source, Cornwall. They don't get much better than that. Think of the Plowman's as kind of like the British version of the charcuterie board. It's a spread of various foodstuffs, and different places will offer different variations. But the key ingredients are bread, cheese, and onions. You might also find salad, ham, hard-boiled eggs, apple, chutney, pickled eggs or onions, or any other similar cold ingredients. Plowman's lunches are rather famous for being sold in pubs, having once been pretty much the only type of food they would agree to serve. As such, a proper Plowman's is invariably served with a pint of beer. Another cold British classic is the pork pie, a small snack with a long-reaching history. The earliest mentions of something resembling the pork pie appear as far back as the 14th century, and the use of gelatin to preserve the meat inside was a staple method of medieval cooking. Nowadays, pork pies are often included as part of a plowman's or eaten with a salad on the side. Arguably the best around is the Melton Mowbray pork pie, which is always hand-molded, made with uncured meat, and unlike other versions, uses pork that has been chopped rather than minced. They may not look like much, but they're one of Britain's most beloved snack foods. Scones, or as some denizens of the UK say it, scones, are a type of sweet or sometimes savory baked food made from wheat or oatmeal. Although they come in many varieties, the most famous use of scones in England is as part of cream tea, a traditional type of afternoon tea that has them served with clotted cream and jam. The pronunciation of the word is also a major point of contention amongst British people. A 2016 survey found that 51% of Britons pronounce it to rhyme with gone, whereas 42% pronounce it to rhyme with bone. The former is a northern and Scottish thing, whereas the latter is a southern thing. For some reason, Brits take this debate very, very seriously indeed. So, first question, scone, scone? What scone. Do, if you, scone. Well, scone. if you're from northern, it's scone, isn't it? Scone. scone. It is. It scone. is scone. Because once scone. it's scone, it's scone. The range in quality between good scotch eggs and bad scotch eggs is very wide indeed. That is to say that bad scotch eggs are very bad indeed, and good scotch eggs are nothing less than pure bliss. Scotch eggs are boiled eggs wrapped in sausage meat, coated in breadcrumbs, and deep-fried or baked. They're a favorite bar snack up and down the UK, but you'll also find lesser versions in British supermarkets. A good scotch egg should have a thick lining of high-quality pork sausage meat, preferably well-flavored with herbs such as parsley and chives. The egg should be soft-boiled rather than hard-boiled, and when you cut or bite into it, the yolk should basically explode. This is one dish that's worth the extra effort. To most British people, the term scouse will conjure images of Liverpool, where the inhabitants are colloquially known as scousers. But they're called this for a reason. Scouse was originally a stew concocted by sailors, which first originated in Norway and spread to Liverpool, once Britain's foremost port. Although the city has changed a lot since its imperial heyday, the dish has remained, and is still served at cafes and restaurants across the city. This stew is usually lamb or beef-based, and also contains onions, carrot, potatoes, cabbage, and pretty much any other leftover vegetable you have, although beetroot tends to be a particularly popular ingredient. Served up with some nice, crusty bread, Scouse comes out on top as the best winter stew out there, and one of the UK's tastiest regional dishes, full stop. Stargazy pie is a truly peculiar dish, both in name and appearance. The term stargazy refers to the fact that the fish in the pie, usually pilchards or sardines, are facing outwards, with their heads sticking up through the crust. Aside from the fish, stargazy pie can contain any number of different ingredients, including hard-boiled eggs, bacon, onion, mustard, herbs, wine, and more. And although it looks downright weird, it actually tastes pretty great. It's a rich, salty, and extremely filling dish that acts as an entire meal in one. The roast dinner is probably the ultimate British dish, typically eaten on a Sunday and nowadays very popular in pubs. The typical roast is centered around one particular kind of roast meat, 
This can be anything from beef to pork to lamb to chicken, although game birds are occasionally used too. Accompanying the meat, you'll find any combination of roast potatoes, gravy, broccoli, green beans, cabbage, parsnips, swede, carrots, peas, and cauliflower cheese. Each different type of meat comes with its own additions, too. Roast beef, for example, is served with Yorkshire pudding, mustard, or horseradish. Pork tends to come with applesauce, crackling, and stuffing. Lamb almost always sits alongside mint sauce, and chicken is accompanied by stuffing or cranberry sauce. Arguably, the best roast dinner experience involves a pub, friends or family, and a lot of beer and wine. But nothing beats a homemade Sunday roast either, and the scope for customization is practically unlimited. Toad in the Hole is a little less gross than it sounds, mostly because it doesn't involve any actual toads. Instead, the toads are sausages, while the hole refers to a single giant Yorkshire pudding. Usually served with gravy and vegetables, this dish is a kind of middle ground between the roast dinner and bangers and mash. Unfortunately, Toad in the Hole is far harder to find than either of those dishes, but it's more than worth a go if you can, especially if you love a good Yorkshire pudding. As you may have learned on a certain 90s sitcom, trifle is an English dessert made up of sponge fingers, fruit, jelly, custard, whipped cream, and decidedly not beef sautéed with peas and onions. A good trifle feels like heaven in a bowl. A great trifle, which contains the traditional alcoholic element, such as port, sherry, or Madeira wine, is one of the best desserts out there, full stop. Every layer works together in perfect harmony, making for both a visual and literal feast for the senses. There's ample opportunity for experimentation here too, as pretty much anything that's sweet is bound to prove most welcome in whatever recipe you decide to use. Referred to on the Great British Bake Off as the nation's favorite cake, Victoria sponge cake is kind of like a sweet, sugary sandwich, in which a filling of jam and cream sits between two thick layers of light frosted sponge. It's not a hugely common menu item in British restaurants or pubs, but the Victoria sponge cake is a favorite for home bakers, and almost every Brit has turned their hand to it at least once before. Luckily, it's a cinch to make, and more than worth the effort, too. While there isn't a shortage of food options in the United States, it can be difficult to track down prepared food that isn't either overpriced or simply bland. But we've got you covered. These are the ridiculously cheap and extremely delicious foods you need to try. For less than two bucks, you can go to McDonald's and get your hands on a McDouble. If you've never had one before, a McDouble features two beef patties, American cheese, onions, pickles, mustard, and ketchup. It tastes really good. The quality from restaurant to restaurant is consistent, and you get 390 calories to power you through the rest of your busy day. Pro tip, McDonald's double cheeseburger is the same, except it has two slices of American cheese. So unless you really like cheese, save a few cents and go with the McDouble. In colleges across America, there are students who are living off of hot and ready pizzas from Little Caesars. Admittedly, these aren't the best pizzas you can find, but for $5, it's a cheap food you should try at least once. In return for your five bucks, you get eight slices of pizza that total more than 2,200 calories, enough food to last you a whole day. For a dollar more, you can upgrade to an extra most bestest pepperoni pizza that includes both extra pepperoni and extra cheese. You can never have too much pepperoni or too much cheese. So get the upgrade if you can afford it. Mmm, pizza. I didn't hear the delivery guy pull up. <laughs> That's because it's not delivery. Really? And it's not exactly pizza either. It's almost pizza. While Raising Cane's is primarily known for its chicken tenders, don't you dare miss out on the Texas Toast. If you pass on your chance to try it, you'll never forgive yourself. The Texas Toast at Raising Cane's isn't from pre-sliced bread. Instead, they take pull-apart bread topped with sesame seeds and then coat it with a combination of garlic and butter. Finally, the bread is grilled to make it crispy but never burnt. The result is a piece of Texas toast that you'll remember for the rest of your living days. When it comes to ridiculously cheap food, it's difficult to top the hot dog combo you can find at Costco. For $1.50, you can receive a quarter-pound hot dog and a refillable 20-ounce soda. The hot dog is not only big and fully capable of filling you up, it's absolutely yummy. Costco actually loses money each time they sell a hot dog. However, they have found that it's worth it in order to keep their loyal customers happy and to increase traffic in their stores. The next time you're hungry but don't want to spend much, head to Costco's food court for this amazing deal. 
Though prices vary by location, buying a McChicken at McDonald's for a dollar or two definitely qualifies as ridiculously cheap. If you've never had a McChicken, you're missing out. These sandwiches come with a filet of crispy chicken, a toasted bun, shredded lettuce, and mayo. And if you like your food spicy, you'll love the hot and spicy McChicken. While you can taste the heat, it's not overpowering, and instead, it just adds to the joyous occasion. Whether you go the spicy or regular route, you'd be wise to order two because you'll be begging for more once your first one is gone. The tacos at Jack in the Box are ridiculously cheap, and while they aren't authentic Mexican food, they are better than you may be imagining. This popular deal can usually get you two tacos for a total of 99 cents. And these tacos have a crunchy shell that contains taco meat, along with American cheese and shredded lettuce. Don't skip the taco sauce, as it adds a much-needed kick to take this pair of tacos to the next level. If you have a $5 bill burning a hole in your pocket and you're in the mood for a scrumptious meal, drive on over to KFC. Their $5 Phillips do just what the name suggests. It will fill you up to the brim for only $5. The best $5 Phillip gives you a drumstick, thigh, biscuit, mashed potatoes, cookie, and medium drink. If you prefer white meat, you can opt for a chicken breast instead of the drumstick and thigh. Either way, it's a total win. The sliders at White Castle are a smart way to spend your fast food money. For less than a dollar, you can buy an original slider. For about 20 more cents, you can get a cheese slider. If you want an even better deal, you can purchase 20 original sliders for $10.99 if you go online or use the White Castle app. It's an experience that'll make your life complete. Taste one of these sliders with beef that was grilled on top of onions and then served with a pickle slice inside of a yummy bun. You might find that you just can't get enough of these delicious little burgers. Looks like you guys had some night, huh? <laughs> I want 30 sliders, five french fries, and four large cherry Cokes. I want the same except make mine Diet Cokes. Sometimes you don't want to order an entire pizza. If you're by yourself or just want a slice of pizza for the road, you don't want to have to deal with a box of pizza. That's exactly when you should head to Costco. There, in the food court, you can find big slices of pizza for only $1.99 per slice. You get to pick from cheese, pepperoni, or combo. After you eat your slice, you may decide to go ahead and buy a whole pizza. If you do, it'll cost you less than $10. And who doesn't love leftover pizza? Sure, Burger King is known for its burgers, but the chain has other stuff worth ordering. When it comes to cheap foods, the chicken nuggets are an unbelievable deal. The nuggets at Burger King go on sale often and are sometimes only around $1 for 10. While these aren't the best tasting nuggets on the globe, you can't beat their price tag. Plus, Burger King has a number of yummy sauces to dip your nuggets in, including buffalo, barbecue, and ranch. When you see the hot light turned on at your local Krispy Kreme, don't hesitate to go in and purchase an original glazed donut. It only costs around a buck, and you can't beat the quality, especially when it's still warm. If looking out for the hot light is too much work, download their app and you'll get an alert on your phone when the donuts at your favorite Krispy Kreme location are ready for you to devour. While they have many different types of donuts that are worth falling in love with, start with the original glazed donut before you branch out. A Frosty from Wendy's is a filling dessert or afternoon snack if you're being honest, even if you order the small. Not only will your sweet tooth be completely thrilled, a small Frosty will only put you back 99 cents, with regular promotions dropping the price even further. It's up to you to decide whether to go with chocolate or vanilla. However, either way you decide to go, your Frosty will have some vanilla in it. The chocolate Frosty is actually a mix of chocolate and vanilla, and now you know. Wawa is a chain of convenience stores on the East Coast with more than 800 locations. You can find sandwiches, soups, and snacks at Wawa, but what really stands out is something they call a sizzly. A sizzly is basically a breakfast sandwich that comes in a range of flavor combinations. If you have time to only eat one sizzly at Wawa, go with the one with sausage, egg, and cheese. You can find these hearty sandwiches near the register, and they are hot and ready for you to eat in exchange for only a few dollars. While Chipotle Mexican Grill has a lot of fairly priced items on their menu, it's difficult to beat the bang for your buck you get when you order their chips and guacamole. To start with, Chipotle's tortilla chips are glorious. They are fried in the restaurant and then topped with salt and a dash of lime juice. Chipotle's guacamole is also made fresh every day and has a variety of fresh ingredients including jalapenos, cilantro, onion, and of course, avocados. Dipping a still warm tortilla chip to get a scoop of their made-from-scratch guacamole is heaven on earth. While people usually head to Subway for their sandwiches, their cookies are the sweet treat you should try at least once in your life. One cookie costs less than a dollar, and you can save even more by purchasing three cookies or even a dozen. The cookies at Subway are impossibly soft and melt in your mouth, but they don't crumble in your hands. While they offer a variety of flavors, go with either the double chocolate cookie or the white chip macadamia nut cookie. If you're feeding a family and you're looking for ridiculously cheap food, the answer to your prayers can be found at Costco. For an amazingly low price of $4.99, you can get a plump and juicy rotisserie chicken that will please even the pickiest of taste buds. 
Not only is this a great deal, the rotisserie chicken from Costco is actually the best rotisserie chicken you can find at any grocery store. If you buy this bird often enough, you could even justify the annual membership cost for Costco with this one item alone. Dunkin' is best known for their coffee and their donuts, true, but the next time you visit, take a good hard look at their muffins. You can get one muffin for less than $2 or four muffins for about $6. While their chocolate chip muffin and their honey bran raisin muffin are good options, it's Dunkin's blueberry muffin that really takes the cake. All their muffins are soft, chewy, and packed with flavor. The blueberry muffin has a lot of fruity flavor within, and a sugary glaze on top to really steal your heart. Best part of my day is when I'm at Dunkin'. Think that's sad? Yes, very. Real customers know the holidays run on Dunkin'. On a cold night when only a hot meal will satisfy your hunger, chili from Wendy's isn't an option that you should overlook. It's hot, fast, and the taste will hit the spot. Wendy's chili is made with ingredients that include fresh beef, celery, onions, green peppers, and red kidney beans. And the beef in the chili is actually leftover burger meat, which explains why it tastes so good. And while you can try to make Wendy's chili at home, it's easier to go to the drive through window, hand over a couple dollars, and drive away with a batch of ready-to-eat goodness. If you're craving a bagel that won't break your budget, Panera Bread is the place you should visit. From their cinnamon swirl and raisin bagel to their Asiago cheese bagel, Panera Bread is sure to have a bagel that is calling your name. And while their bagels are fancy and are of the highest quality, they only cost about a dollar. If you buy six, 13, or 18, the price you pay per bagel drops precipitously. The best advice is to go ahead and purchase 18 of them and share them with your friends and coworkers. Everyone will thank you. You can get unlimited coffee at Panera too, making it a great place for a cheap breakfast. If you're looking for the best bargain on Domino's menu, their Parmesan bread bites are difficult to top. For around $3, you get 16 bites that you will enjoy until the last bite is no more. The Parmesan bread bites are sprinkled with a blend of Asiago cheese in addition to Parmesan cheese, and they have a distinct but pleasant garlic flavor. Be sure you also get some marinara sauce for dipping purposes. Although, truthfully, these Parmesan bread bites are good enough to eat on their own without any sauce. Everyone loves the Whopper at Burger King, and while there's nothing wrong with ordering a Whopper, they're not exactly cheap, and if you order them regularly, eventually your bank account will be begging for mercy. Thankfully, Burger King has an often overlooked replacement on their menu, the Humble Cheeseburger. While it's not exactly like a Whopper, it tastes similar enough to satisfy your cravings. Best of all, it only costs about a buck. The cheeseburger comes with a flame-grilled patty, American cheese, pickles, ketchup, and mustard on a sesame seed bun. While the fried chicken at Church's Chicken is middle of the pack when it comes to fast food chicken chains, their biscuits are a completely different story. In fact, it's worth it to go to a Church's Chicken just to order their biscuits. You can get one biscuit for less than a dollar or six for about three dollars. Biscuits at Church's Chicken are the perfect texture. Not too firm, not too flaky, but what sets them apart is the fact that they are blessed with a coating of honey butter. The honey butter is sweet but not too sweet, which makes it easy to eat one biscuit after another after another. You might feel just a little guilty, but… Who cares when the food is this good? Please stop feeding my son. No, Taco Bell doesn't have authentic nachos on its menu. That said, Nachos Bel Grande is a great deal, even though you won't really find anything like this south of the border. Nachos Bel Grande comes with Taco Bell's signature seasoned beef, nacho cheese, refried beans, tomatoes, and sour cream, on top of a bed of tortilla chips. Yes, you can find better nachos, but for between $3 and $4, Nachos Bel Grande are a ridiculously cheap food that makes for a tasty meal. If you're looking for an amazing breakfast option that you can get at a drive through restaurant, it doesn't get much better than a honey butter chicken biscuit from Whataburger. The ingredients look like a normal chicken strip topped with honey butter inside of a buttermilk biscuit, but there's nothing normal about the taste. This breakfast sandwich is something you should put in your mouth at least once in your life. It's also priced very fairly, so you won't feel bad if eating one for breakfast becomes part of your daily routine. If all you want is some fries at a great price, Jack in the Box has the answer. Their seasoned curly fries are reliably awesome. The seasoning can't be beat, the quality of the potatoes they use is obviously high, and these fries taste great with or without ketchup. While you can get a small order, save yourself the regret and go ahead and get the large. You deserve to bask in the glory of these seasoned curly fries at least once in your life. If you have a hankering for hot wings, don't forget about KFC. While their hot wings don't get a lot of publicity, they're a perfectly tasty option that come with a very reasonable price tag. KFC hasn't been selling hot wings for a long time, but they're slowly getting the hang of it. While they offer many different flavor options, their Nashville Hot reigns supreme over the rest. These wings are legitimately hot, so you'll want a drink on hand to cool your mouth. Food trucks in Austin, Texas that sell tacos aren't in short supply to say the least. 
That said, if you want the best of the bunch, go to Quantos Tacos. This food truck has fantastic tacos for a price that will blow your mind. What allows Quantos Tacos to stand apart from the competition is the meat in their tacos that is always tender and amazingly juicy. Their tacos usually cost $2, while they also sell quesadillas for $5. Be warned that Quantos Tacos only sells a limited number of tacos per day because they stop once they run out of ingredients. Eating food at a furniture store? Absolutely! Don't knock it until you try it. IKEA's food court serves an amazing platter of Swedish meatballs for just $5.99. In addition to the meatballs, each platter comes with lingonberry jam and mashed potatoes, and to top things off, a layer of gravy is added to titillate your taste buds and get you in the mood to purchase furniture. Even if you have no need for another piece of furniture, you owe it to yourself to go to IKEA and get a cheap order of Swedish meatballs. While Del Taco has many economical choices on their menu, their street tacos really stand out. Not only is the value remarkable, they taste just like they were made by your grandmother. The street tacos come with your choice of grilled chicken or carne asada. Once you pick the meat, the tacos are topped with avocado, cilantro, onions, and roasted salsa. While the chicken tastes good, it's the carne asada that really shines and will have you reminiscing about your childhood. If in doubt, buy one of each. You won't be disappointed. Seattle has some of the best street food in America, and Spice Walla is arguably the best of the best. This food stand serves authentic Indian food that will leave you licking your fingers. While Spice Walla has a variety of rolls that are definitely memorable, their masala aloo is what you should eat. Masala aloo is basically perfectly spiced french fries with a green sauce for dipping. It costs only $3, but this platter of fries is big enough to serve as your entire meal. You were probably bored with tater tots back in elementary school. Those tots were a mushy mess that lacked much taste at all. However, don't give up on the hunt for the perfect tater tot until you try what Sonic Drive-In has to offer. Their tots are amazing, and they're crispy with the perfect amount of oil and salt. Additionally, they taste fresh, and a large order is all you need for a meal on the run. Before it's time to meet your maker, be sure to go to Sonic to give these tots a try. Although not everything at Costco is worth buying, there are dozens of food items that you should consume at least once in your life. By the time you finish trying all these items, don't be shocked if you end up visiting Costco on a daily basis. Not only does Costco have the best rotisserie chicken you can find anywhere, it's so tasty and such a good deal that everyone deserves to try it at least once in their life. Costco actually loses money on each rotisserie chicken they sell. Why do they insist on keeping the price steady at $4.99? Costco knows that once you try their chicken, you'll come back again and again for another yummy bird, and everyone knows you can't just buy one thing when you enter a Costco. It's a smart business move on their part, but it's also a delicious deal for you and anyone else who wants to help you eat the chicken. When doing a mental search for where you can get a healthy snack on the go, you probably don't think of Costco, but you should, as their acai bowls are an affordable and delectable scoop of goodness. These plant-based and vegan bowls contain strawberries, blueberries, banana chips, granola, and an acai mix. The granola has cane sugar in it, which makes the acai bowl a sweet treat you can scarf down for breakfast or at any point in the day when you want to reward yourself without blowing your diet. And the acai mix comes out of Costco's soft serve machine, so it's pretty easy to trick yourself into thinking you're eating something indulgent. Is there a better taste in the world than a perfectly cooked piece of bacon? Well, as long as you're in my house, you'll do what I do and believe what I believe. So butter your bacon! Yes, father. At Costco, their Kirkland Signature Bacon is to die for. It's meaty, yet has a tasty amount of fat on each piece. To kick things up a notch, the bacon has a memorable smoke flavoring. When you head to Costco, it should definitely make your list of things to buy. Even though it can be argued that Elvis Presley was sent to an early grave thanks to his famous bacon, banana, and peanut butter sandwiches, if he were to rise from his grave one day, he might proclaim that the bacon made it worth it. It's difficult to find good, creamy almond butter. Not only does Costco deliver just that, it's even organic. Kirkland's signature organic, creamy almond butter is an amazing amount of bang for your buck. Even if you believe that peanut butter is your favorite type of nut butter, one mouthful of this stuff will likely change your mind. It has a perfect texture and is easy to spread. Tip: Put this almond butter in your next protein smoothie and you'll be in love. At least one time while you're still in the land of the living, you should order the Kirkland Signature Whole Wheel Parmigiano Reggiano. The 72-pound monstrosity of some of the best cheese found on planet Earth can be yours for a little less than a thousand bucks. Costco imports it directly from Italy after it has been aged for at least 24 months while under the care of expert old-world cheesemakers. You might get tired of cheese while you whittle down the 72-pound wheel, but it's an experience you'll always remember. 
As long as you have your credit card out and you're ready to spend the big bucks, consider adding D'Artagnan Spanish Mangalitza Dry Cured Ham to your basket. Costco will sell you 9.25 pounds of this glorious ham for a cool $500. It's crafted by fourth-generation virtuosos from Spain who know a thing or two about making some of the best ham in the world. All you need to do once you get your hands on it is slice it thin and be thankful that you got to taste this meat before you died. Once you try Kirkland Signature Organic Pure Maple Syrup, you'll never go back to regular pancake syrup again. While most pancake syrup pretends to be maple syrup but is actually just corn syrup mixed with maple flavoring, Kirkland Signature Organic Pure Maple Syrup is 100% real maple syrup. You couldn't find better-tasting syrup short of going to Canada and sucking maple sap directly out of a maple tree. Save yourself the airfare and the embarrassment and go to Costco to change you and your pancakes' lives forever. For more than 35 years, Costco has been selling their hot dog and soda combo for $1.50. Despite just about everything else getting more expensive since then, Costco has held tight on that price. These days, you'd be hard-pressed to find a deal better than $1.50 for a quarter-pound hot dog and 20 ounces of soda. Not only will this combo fill you up, the flavorful hot dog will surprise you with its tastiness. While these dogs are no longer Hebrew national, they're still incredibly scrumptious. While you'll need to do some of the legwork before the take-and-bake Kirkland Signature Chicken Pot Pie hits your stomach, it'll be well worth the effort of firing up your oven when you get home. And by your final bite, you'll wonder why you hadn't tried this pie sooner. The Kirkland Signature Chicken Pot Pie is covered by pie dough from Costco's bakery and filled with all-white meat, carrots, and peas. Everyone who is lucky enough to get a slice will love it, from adults to kids. Some oatmeal raisin cookies are dried out and crumbled before they reach your lips. Other oatmeal raisin cookies are soft, chewy, and packed with flavor. Costco Bakery oatmeal raisin cookies are the latter. What will send these cookies to your life's highlight reel are the big, plump, juicy raisins. It's safe to say the raisins aren't an afterthought in these cookies. In fact, they play the leading role and they're the star of the show. Additionally, Costco has mastered the necessary texture of the oatmeal and the fact that all good oatmeal raisin cookies need a little bit of saltiness to them. Costco is your destination if you're looking for raw organic honey that will add the perfect amount of sweetness to your hectic and dreary weekdays. This honey, which originates in Brazil, manages to be flavorful but not overly sweet and doesn't have the artificial taste that ruins many brands of honey. Short of tapping a beehive in your backyard, you're not going to find fresher tasting honey. Start your day with a slice of toast coated with Kirkland Signature Organic Raw Honey and you'll be able to tackle even the gloomiest of days. If your sweet tooth is begging for pleasure and you only have change in your pocket, head to Costco for a churro. The churros at the food court are hot, fresh, and only cost a dollar. All Costco does is take some dough, fry it up, and sprinkle on some sugar and cinnamon. The result is a surprisingly long, soft, flavorful churro that will totally satisfy your sweet tooth. Do you want even more excitement? Ask the friendly Costco employee for chocolate sauce to dip your churro in. Typical beef jerky can be more of a chore to eat than it's worth. Step into the modern age by purchasing a bag of Kirkland Signature Premium Extra Thick Steak Strips. This jerky is thick, soft, and will leave you completely satisfied. The deep smoke flavoring will make it impossible to eat just one strip, although that isn't a bad thing since this jerky is 98% fat-free and totally gluten-free. Pretzels and peanut butter are an awesome combination. When it comes to the Kirkland Signature peanut butter-filled pretzel nuggets, the name tells you exactly what to expect. Each nugget is made with a salted pretzel and is filled with a generous amount of yummy peanut butter. They are perfect to take to a party or to mindlessly eat from the large container at home as you wind down your day. If you have an extra $1,000 and you want to taste a life-changing food before you die, you can order a six-pound Japanese Wagyu tenderloin roast from Costco. Imported from Japan, you'll soon find out why many experts agree that the tastiest beef in the world comes from Japanese farms. The Japanese Wagyu tenderloin roast melts on your tongue like it's warm butter. Spend the money to order it from Costco and your mind will be irreparably blown. The Kirkland Signature Artisan Rolls are a heavenly delight that are sure to make your dinner a success. These things are basically soft ciabatta rolls that are cut in half and ready for you to munch on. While good right out of the package, if you want to take it to the next level, toss these bad boys on a grill, then fill them with all your favorite ingredients for the perfect sandwich. Once the Kirkland Signature Artisan Rolls are slightly toasted, their flavor is enhanced and the texture will make each bite a party. 
The Costco Bakery blueberry muffins are big and beautiful like muffins are supposed to be. The blueberries are large and completely in charge of the flavor. Each muffin has an ample amount of blueberries for each bite to feature at least one berry. The muffins are baked to a golden brown but are moist and buttery inside. If you want to taste these goodies at their best, heat them up and then slather them with butter or jam. That said, these muffins are still joyous right out of the package. Pizza is serious business for Costco. In fact, if you consider Costco a pizza chain due to all the pizza they sell, it'd be the 15th largest chain in the country. The pizza here is made super fast, but they don't make shortcuts when it comes to taste. What makes Costco's pizza taste even better is the appetizing price tag. By the slice, it's $1.99. By the pie, it's $9.99. Either deal will make your bank account smile. While Costco doesn't offer a wide variety of pizza toppings, it's basically either cheese pepperoni or a combo with mushrooms, sausage, pepperoni, olives, bell peppers, and onions, the freshness and the fact that it's so cheap could make this your new favorite pizza chain after you give it a try. You have to be brave to order your first chicken bake at Costco because it doesn't look like a culinary delight. But once you have it in your hands, your bravery will pay immediate dividends. It tastes so much better than it looks that you may be left in a state of shock. A chicken bake is made with pizza dough, chicken breast, mozzarella cheese, and bits of bacon. But before it is pinched into a tube and put in the oven, the inside and the outside of the chicken bake is brushed with a creamy Caesar dressing. Yum! Even if the heavenly gates are calling your name, hold on a couple more days so you can try the Plaza Ocetra Kilo Caviar Pack from Costco. While you'll need $1,300 to get your tiny spoon on this caviar, you'll believe it was a small price to pay once you revel in its majesty. The Plaza Ocetra Kilo Caviar Pack comes with Russian sturgeon caviar from Bulgaria that is considered some of the best of the best. Throw a party and enjoy this caviar with your friends because you'll get enough to feed up to 50 people. When it comes to healthy snacks, it doesn't get much healthier than the Kirkland Signature Organic Roasted Seaweed Snack available at Costco. Coming straight from Korea, the seaweed snack has a sesame flavor that is insanely addicting. But even if you eat way too much, you'll be happy to learn that each serving only has 20 calories. If you believe seaweed is disgusting and not something humans should be eating, you'd be wise to give this Costco snack a try to have your mind changed. If you enjoy tins of assorted European cookies, the Kirkland Signature European Cookies with Belgian Chocolate is something you should go buy at Costco before doing anything else. The assortment includes outstanding choices, most made with Belgian milk chocolate. Start with the hazelnut cream cookie. The hazelnut and chocolate form a powerful duo you won't soon forget. These tins of cookies make great gifts, but you'll have a hard time parting with them. While this giant plastic container of Kirkland Signature Milk Chocolate Raisins may be a danger to your diet, you won't regret your purchase from Costco. Once you have more than three pounds of milk chocolate raisins at your disposal, you'll feel like you're enjoying little bites of heaven. The raisins are bigger than you'd expect, while the milk chocolate will melt in your mouth as you enjoy every bite. From coast to coast, fast food chains have popped up across the U.S. like mushrooms after a rainstorm. Many are specific to a state or region, and the only way you can try them out is to go there. Let's talk about which ones are worth the trip. Burgerfy started out in Florida and has since expanded up the eastern seaboard. Burgerfy actually is a reference to the, quote, burgerfication of the nation, and the fast, casual burger joint currently has 10 burgers on the menu at most locations, including three plant-based burgers. Most of the six beef burgers have two patties, fresh, never frozen, and some are loaded with fantastic toppings, like bacon tomato jam. Burgerfy also gets serious points for having hot dogs made from Wagyu beef and using only humanely raised chickens. One item Burgerfy is especially famous for is their onion rings. These crispy beauties are as large as a bangle bracelet and are beer battered and fried to order. And of course, you can wash down the delicious burger and onion rings with one of Burgerfy's shakes, with flavors such as red velvet, Oreo cookie, or banana churro. It's a win from start to finish. Wisconsin-based Culver's started in 1984 with primarily Midwest locations. But since then, they've reached out to the Southeast and Southwest with over 800 locations. Culver's serves a lot of frozen custard, but the star of the show is their famous butter burger, a pressed and seared fresh beef burger with a buttered bun. Slapping a dollop of butter on a burger isn't as weird as you might think. 
In fact, it's delicious. Wisconsin is the Dairyland state, and keeping true to Culver's Wisconsin roots, you'll find fried cheddar cheese curds, pretzel bites dipped in cheddar cheese sauce, and an ever-changing menu of daily-made frozen yogurt and shakes, including a root beer float made with Culver's own root beer. Along with the usual chicken and fish sandwiches, Culver's also has home-style favorites, such as a pot roast and a pork loin sandwich. Culver's is fast-growing, and it's likely you'll eventually get to try this Wisconsin institution closer to home. But until that happens, it's worth the road trip. The original Bojangles' famous chicken and biscuits was opened in Charlotte, North Carolina in 1977. It featured a crispy Cajun-spiced chicken breast sandwiched between the halves of a buttermilk biscuit, and it was a major success. Today, Bojangles has well over 700 locations, almost all in the South. Their success can be attributed to the chain's continued insistence on using fresh, never-frozen chicken and daily baked biscuits made from scratch every 20 minutes. Bojangles kept to its southern roots by adding Cajun beans, dirty rice, mashed potatoes and gravy, mac and cheese, and other southern staples to the menu. All that means it's worth stopping there a few times when you're in town. When compared with KFC, Bojangles' chicken is less expensive, more flavorful, and less greasy. Bojangles' famous biscuits aren't just made for the chicken. There are many chickenless biscuit menu items that pay tribute to classic southern cooking. The quality of ingredients is Bojangles' hallmark as a fast food place, so if you're driving through the South and have a yen for some good old fried chicken and buttermilk biscuits, stop by Bojangles. If you're not from Ohio, you might scratch your head and wonder, what the heck is Skyline Chili? It's a Cincinnati culinary institution dating back to 1949, when their top-secret recipe for a beanless chili first hit the streets. The chili is made with a unique blend of spices, and since they're not giving specifics, you'll have to go there for the real deal. At Skyline, the chili is ladled over spaghetti and then topped with a blizzard of shredded cheddar. It's not pretty, but many say it's incredibly delicious. This chili spaghetti concoction is served in several different ways, and that's referring to the number of ingredients. The chili spaghetti cheese combo is called a three-way. Add onions or beans, it's a four-way, and add both onions and beans, it's a five-way. And then there's the coney, which is basically a chili dog with gobs of cheese. They have salads, potatoes, and kids' meals, but locals go there for the chili. Most of the Skyline Chili locations are in Ohio, but there are a few in Kentucky, Indiana, Florida, and Tennessee. You can buy canned Skyline Chili online or in many grocery stores, but you should try the real thing in Ohio and see what all the fuss is about. If you happen to be driving through eastern Tennessee or southwest Virginia, it's likely that an oddly tiered sky-blue structure adorned with gigantic fast food will catch your eye. Pal's Sudden Service has steadfastly kept their 30 locations local, and it's famous for their food and extraordinarily well-trained staff. All but two of Pal's are drive through only, and they serve most of the same food you can find at any other drive through but with a southern twist. Breakfast, for example, is all about the biscuits and the cheddar rounds, which are hash brown bites stuffed with cheese. Mmm, crispy, crunchy on the outside and full of magic. Not only is Pals known for its high quality, but it's renowned for super speedy service. You'll spend just 12 seconds at the drive up window and 18 seconds at the handout window. They've set the standard for what drive throughs should be. Maybe their buildings are a bit wacky, but Pals is one of the best fast food joints in the country. This wildly popular burger joint opened in California in 1948. Nestled in a small space with no indoor seating and a two-way speaker box connected to the kitchen, owners Harry and Esther Snyder built their burger business by using only the freshest ingredients, keeping as much of the work in-house as possible. Its enormous popularity has a lot to do with in and outs ingredients. They use fresh beef, which they grind themselves, the vegetables are fresh, and the soft, spongy buns that perfectly cushion the burger and toppings are baked daily. The menu is simple – burgers, fries, shakes, and soft drinks. And the not-so-secret menu gives you options for how many beef patties you want, toppings to choose from, protein style, animal style, and even a grilled cheese. For years, In-N-Out Burger has been exclusive to California, but it's since expanded to over 300 locations. Still, they say not to expect nationwide expansion anytime soon, so try them when you get a chance. Wawa started out in Pennsylvania, but over the past 57 years, it branched out along the East Coast and now has over 850 locations. 
Fans of Wawa are quite enthusiastic, and it's little wonder. Wawa's menu is amazing. Breakfast sandwiches are hoagies stuffed with scrambled eggs or an omelette and meats, such as applewood smoked bacon, sausage, or even cheesesteak. Sizzlies are Wawa's pre-packaged on-the-go breakfast sandwiches that have reviewers swooning. As to the award-winning sandwiches, you'll definitely struggle in choosing only one. They have hot and cold hoagies, deli sandwiches, pitas, and paninis, all made to order. Adding to Wawa's dizzying array of fast foods are salads, soups, mac and cheese, stuffed pretzels, chicken bites, jalapeno bites, and their own milk and ice cream. You could easily cater a big event with Wawa, and actually, if you live in Philadelphia, they'll do it for you. One of the fiercest rivalries in the fast food industry is between Wawa and Sheets. Even Pennsylvania politicians get heated up about which one is better, and that's how you know it's serious. In 1952, Bob Sheets bought one of his father's dairy stores and founded Sheets Inc. Then, in 1962, he brought in his brother to work part-time at the Sheets convenience store, and by 1972, they expanded to 14 stores. The company has been growing ever since. When compared side by side, both chains have freshly made burgers, sandwiches, and salads, but Sheets has more Mexican dishes. Sheets also leans a little more heavily toward fried foods. Both are great for food on the run and late night munchies, and it comes down to location. So if you're driving east to west or vice versa in Pennsylvania, try them both and join the Sheets vs. Wawa battle. If you live above the Mason Dixon line, you've probably never heard of Cookout, a fast food chain with over 250 locations throughout the South. And that's a shame, because Cookout is one of the best burger joints in the country for several reasons. Most cookouts have a double drive through and a walk-up window, so you have plenty of options for getting your food fast. Its menu is an eclectic mix of char-grilled burgers, hot dogs, corn dogs, and grilled chicken. But you can also pick up some traditional southern favorites like hush puppies, vinegary coleslaw, and barbecue pork. The combo trays are incredibly inexpensive, under $5, and the portions are heaping. Cookout is also famous for its 40-plus milkshakes with flavors such as peach cobbler, banana pudding, and versions of cheesecake. It's worth a stop just to sample the desserts. According to the story, brothers R.B. and Maurice Jennings were given a choice by their grandmother as she was dying, the farm or the biscuit recipe. Maurice got the recipe, and when the biscuits surpassed the sales of pizza at his 12 pizza places, he transformed them into Biscuitville. Maurice's son took over the business, which now has 65 locations, almost all in North Carolina. As you might expect, biscuit sandwiches rule the roost at Biscuitville, and they are gems of southern cookery. The buttermilk biscuits are made from scratch every 15 minutes, and you can watch the Biscuit Boss make them in real time. Biscuitville is only open for breakfast and lunch. Its menu has the usual breakfast sandwiches with egg, sausage, bacon and cheese, but the addition of southern-style ingredients, which Biscuitville sources from local farms, make the true biscuit sandwich stars. The spicy chicken and honey biscuit, the pork chop biscuit, the country ham biscuit, the home-style gravy biscuit, and even the fried bologna biscuit are unique to Biscuitville. They're also famous for their baked goods. Peach muffin, apple fritter, honey bun, all baked fresh in the morning. It's easy to understand why Biscuitville has been voted one of the 10 best regional fast food chains in America. Shake Shack started out as a hot dog cart in Manhattan's Madison Square Park in 2001, and in three years, it grew into a permanent kiosk. The menu expanded to include burgers, crinkle-cut fries, and shakes, and it's called Fine Casual because customers will find seriously high-quality ingredients being used in a casual setting. It's safe to say that the concept changed the fast food industry, and you can find Shake Shacks in 275 locations from California to Dubai. Burgers are the main attraction, although there are a couple of chicken and vegetarian options as well as hot dogs, and they're really, really good. The crinkle-cut fries are also a big thing, despite a negative New York Times review in 2012. Everything on the Shake Shack menu is made with fresh ingredients, except for the crinkle-cut fries. They're frozen, and after the Times review, Shake Shack spent $1 million to research hand-cut fresh French fries. They bombed, and the frozen crinkle-cut fries are here to stay. You can top them with Shake Shack's special cheese sauce and bacon, so what's not to love? Shakes come in five flavors, and the Shack's frozen custard is whipped up fresh every day. Penn Station is nowhere near New York's bustling train terminal, 
It's a chain of fast, casual restaurants with over 300 locations in 15 Midwestern and Southern states. Originally called the uninspiring Philadelphia Steak and Sub, it was changed to the more memorable Penn Station East Coast Subs. The menu has a few wraps and salads, but almost all of the sandwiches are grilled or cold subs. Made to order with freshly baked bread, Penn Station subs are stuffed with meats and cheeses in 20 different varieties, such as the chicken cordon bleu pizza and, of course, cheesesteak. Most of the ingredients are fixed, but still customizable for each sub. But the Dagwood lets you dream up your own sandwich. If you don't want to be weighed down by the roll, you can turn any sub into a wrap or salad or order a 3-inch snack size. Fries are hand-cut and fried to order, and pounds of lemons are squeezed every day for fresh lemonade. Penn Station offers you a more custom-built experience than other more famous sub-chains. Living the good life, Joe. Living the good life indeed. Texans are obsessed about Whataburger as Californians are about In-N-Out. This Texan fast food icon began in 1950 in Corpus Christi, Texas, when owner Harmon Dobson dreamed of creating a burger so huge the customer would yell out, What a burger! In 1961, Dobson built the first orange and white striped A-frame store, and as a former pilot, he designed it so Whataburger could be seen from a plane. Dobson died in a plane crash in 1967, and his wife took over running the business. It was family-run until 2019, and today Whataburger has over 800 locations in the southwest and southeast, from Arizona to Florida. Whataburger has seven burgers on the menu, along with limited-time special burgers, but customers can customize the bread, the meat, the size of the burger, and the toppings over 38,000 ways. Whataburger is open 24-7 and has an impressive breakfast selection, including biscuit sandwiches, pancakes, egg sandwiches, and taquitos, which can be made to the customer's preferences. Fries and onion rings can be amped up with an array of dipping sauces and ketchups, and even the three salads on the menu can be customized. Everything's bigger in Texas. There are hamburgers, and then there are hamburgers, like the kind you get at Whataburger. Georgia-based Zaxby's was dreamed up in 1990, and although it was slow to expand, there are currently more than 900 locations situated in the South and Southeastern U.S. Today, Zaxby's is often compared to other chicken fast food restaurants. Known for their boneless and bone-in chicken wings and chicken fingers, Zaxby's also gets things right with its breaded, fried chicken fillet that's topped with a top-secret Zax sauce or the newer spicy Zax sauce. In fact, sauces are a big deal at Zaxby's. If you order chicken wings, you get to choose a sauce or dip from 15 that range in heat level from mild to insane. Each meal comes with crinkle-cut fries and Texas toast, a thickly sliced bread that's been buttered on both sides and grilled. In March 2021, Zaxby's threw down the gauntlet by relaunching the Chicken Sandwich War with its signature sandwich, a behemoth that needs its own larger bun and wrapper. If you're down south and it's Sunday, when Chick-fil-A is closed, get your fried chicken at Zaxby's. In 1980, the new owners of the hamburger Habit changed the name to The Habit. By 1997, The Habit had only 17 locations until it was purchased by a private equity firm. The chain rapidly expanded, and in a 2014 Consumer Reports poll, it beat in an out burger for having the tastiest burger in America. The Habit Burger Grill doesn't have an extensive menu, and though it's considered fast food, it's pretty elevated. There are five hamburgers, all char-grilled over an open flame and made to order. One of the standouts is the Santa Barbara Char, a double burger with cheese and avocado on grilled sourdough bread. Marinated chicken and beef sandwiches are also char-grilled, and if you're not in a meaty mood, go for the sushi-grade ahi tuna filet sandwich. Salads are definitely on the healthy side with char-grilled chicken. You can get fries and onion rings, but why not try the tempura green beans instead? In 2020, the Habit Burger Grill was bought by Yum Brands, which owns Taco Bell, KFC, and Pizza Hut, so this California regional favorite could pop up near you soon. As the first fast food chain restaurant in the world, White Castle turned 100 in 2021. Co-founders Billy Ingram and Walter Anderson opened the first White Castle in 1921, and they sold their square sliders by the sack for just five cents apiece. Back then, burgers were frowned upon as unsafe and unsanitary, so Ingram and Anderson set out to change the public opinion by promoting their spotlessly clean restaurant, where patrons could watch the 100% beef being ground. 
Obviously, their perseverance paid off. Still a family-run business, there are nearly 400 White Castle locations in 14 states, mostly on the East Coast, Midwest, and Florida. A lot has changed since 1921, and White Castle's menu reflects the update to more modern tastes. The original slider is still there, but what's new is the Impossible Slider, a seafood crab cake slider, a panko-breaded fish slider, and even a chicken and waffle slider. Sides run the gamut from traditional fries, onion rings, mozzarella sticks to a bit out there, chicken rings, fish nibblers, and clam strips. White Castle is considered a niche chain, but with the new menu items, the old-timer is still making its mark as distinct. Oh, let's do this together. Founded in 1932 during the Great Depression, Crystal is the second oldest fast food chain in the country. It was inspired by White Castle and sold similar mini square burgers for five cents a piece in their first Chattanooga, Tennessee location. Crystal caught on, and the chain expanded only in the South because of an agreement with White Castle that neither would cross the Mason Dixon line. It wasn't only the burgers that were small, Crystal also miniaturized hot dogs and corn dogs, called pups. But over the years, Crystal has had severe legal and financial problems, and in January 2020, the company filed for bankruptcy. Four months later, Crystal bounced back with a new owner and is once again serving. Their sliders are called Crystals, and they're constantly compared to White Castle's original sliders. The main differences seem to be that Crystals have a denser bun and are more savory. Burgers aside, Crystal has uniquely southern menu items, like the scrambler, a bowl piled with scrambled eggs, cheese, grits, and bacon or sausage. Chili cheese tots are a recent addition, think tater tots drenched in chili and cheddar cheese. Even die-hard White Castle fans need to head here at least once. You have to experience it to have an opinion on which is better, right? Just sign us up for more sliders! Does fried dough topped with peanut butter, chocolate, and Reese's Pieces sound absolutely delicious to you? What about a perfectly made bagel with a surprising hint of sweetness? If you said yes, then you might just be a fan of Canadian cuisine. One of the most famous Canadian culinary exports is undoubtedly poutine. This Quebecois dish consists of french fries topped with cheese curds and gravy. The demand for poutine is so immense that major fast food chains like McDonald's and Burger King have included it on their Canadian menus. And there's even an annual Major League Poutine Eating Contest. Poutine's origins are hotly debated, with many restaurants understandably wanting to claim to be the spot that started the sensation. But it just seems wrong to fight about this when there's so much deep-fried, gravy-covered, cheesy goodness to go around. Poutine has gone from a Quebec snack bar favorite to a standout dish in many restaurants. Almost every country in the world has some version of a meat pie. Britain has steak and kidney, and empanadas are the stuffed pastry of choice throughout Latin America. Americans, of course, are big fans of a good old-fashioned chicken pot pie. As for Canadians, they love a delicious tortere. Tortere is a baked meat pie that consists of a bottom layer of pie pastry and a meat filling center. Then it's topped with another covering of pie pastry before being baked in an oven. The meats used for tortere are traditionally pheasant, rabbit, moose, or pigeon, though more contemporary versions can include pork, beef, or veal. It's traditionally served during the holidays, which makes sense as the spice mix includes cinnamon, clove, allspice, and nutmeg. Our favorite tortiere-related tradition is that it's meant to be shared with family and friends. It doesn't get much more Canadian than that, eh? It's hard to think of Canadian food and not have maple syrup pop into your head. After all, the country's flag features the maple leaf as the bright and beaming center of attention, and deservedly so. As of 2020, Canada is reportedly the world's leading producer and exporter of maple products, accounting for 79% of the global market. Maple syrup and maple sugar products are created from the gathering and cooking of maple tree sap, which is collected by the tapping of the trees. These techniques were originally discovered by indigenous peoples and later adopted by French settlers. Maple syrup is so prevalent in Canada that it's sneaked its way into many otherwise traditionally unsweetened foods and beverage items, such as tea bags and protein powder. Of course, its hand in the dessert industry is also significant, with treats like maple cookies and maple candies readily available for Canucks with a sweet tooth. What's the matter? Your mama didn't teach you how to chug? Come on, Thorn. Come on, Thorn. Oh! The beaver tail is a Canadian national treasure. From British Columbia to Nova Scotia, so many Canadians have a soft spot for this chewy treat made from hand-stretched wheat dough. 
While the traditional version is topped with a simple dusting of cinnamon and sugar, the beaver tail has evolved over the years into more than just a dessert, depending on where you are in Canada. For example, in Vancouver, you can get a salmon tail, which substitutes the standard sweet topping for a combination of cream cheese and capers. In Mont Tremblant, you can pick up a ham and cheese tail or a steak top tail. A specialty of Halifax is the Triple Trip Beaver Tail, which is topped with peanut butter, chocolate, and Reese's Pieces. There's even a popular Canadian restaurant chain called Beaver Tails, which has been serving up this iconic indulgence since 1978. The butter tart is one sugary sweet dessert that certainly deserves its highly esteemed reputation. A traditional Canadian butter tart is a tiny pastry with a wonderfully runny or semi-solid center. The filling is made from butter, sugar, syrup, and egg, then poured into a pastry shell and baked until the filling is semi-solid or runny, depending on your preference. And then it's finished off with a crunchy top. As noted by food bloggers of Canada, the women's auxiliary of the Royal Victoria Hospital cookbook contains the first documented recipe for butter tarts. Published in 1900 in Barrie, Ontario, this appears to be the source that started it all. The original versions were made with maple sugar, freshly churned butter, and dried fruit, such as raisins or currants. They gained popularity in the 1920s, and the rest is beautifully buttery history. Much like the butter tart, the Nanaimo bar is yet another deliciously decadent Canadian dessert. Constructed of a graham cracker crumb and shredded coconut base, a custard-flavored butter icing in the center, and a chocolate ganache on top, the Nanaimo bar is a three-layered, no-bake delight that's famous throughout the country. The Nanaimo bar is so popular that its origins are hotly disputed, as everyone wants a piece of the coconutty credit. According to legend, a group of friends from Nanaimo, British Columbia, found the recipe in the Vancouver Sun. At the time, it was known as chocolate fridge cake, and the friends changed the name in honor of their hometown. The recipe made its way throughout the province's communities, circulated by housewives and home bakers. This story's validity is unconfirmed, but it has a nice ring to it, so we'll happily spread it. The bars enjoyed a rise to fame during Expo 86 in Vancouver, and they've been a national jewel ever since. People there seem to take the Nanaimo bar very seriously. Montreal's travel website describes the city's signature smoked meat as a beef brisket that's often piled high between rye bread and served with mustard and a fresh dill pickle. Unlike New York-style pastrami, Montreal smoked meat uses the entire brisket, whereas the NYC deli equivalent is taken from the much leaner navel cut. The spice mix is also different, with pastrami heavier on the sugar and Montreal meat relying more on black peppercorn and other spices. Montreal smoked meat is so popular that it's now popping up in many other culinary preparations, such as a top poutine and as a pizza topping. Many deli counters and restaurants in Montreal all claim to have the best version. It's a hotly debated topic, but we think the only responsible choice is to hop on a plane to Montreal and decide for yourself. Now this would be a lot easier to eat if I wasn't getting the stink eye from the gentleman behind the camera. Yes, I'll save you half. Jumping into the sugar-coated fun of the other delicious desserts on this list, Saskatoon berry pie is a regional trademark of Western Canada. The tasty appeal of these berries, which grow from the plains to the coast of British Columbia, dates all the way back to their use by Canada's indigenous peoples. They were often ground into a paste and dried for winter storage. They've since made a name for themselves in the Canadian pastry world, and interestingly enough, they're protected by the catalogue of foods known as the International Arc of Taste. Saskatoon berries are similar to blueberries in both appearance and flavor, though they're harder and have smaller seeds. They are also drier and earthier in flavor. Served in many Saskatchewan and Alberta pastry shops and confectionaries, the famous Saskatoon berry pie is made from flour, pastry, butter, eggs, and of course, Saskatoon berries. Often paired with vanilla ice cream or whipped cream, this pie is a Canadian culinary treasure. My Lots favorite. of Saskatoon berries, yeah. If you grew up in the United States, chances are you know pea meal bacon as Canadian bacon. Unlike its fattier cousin that consists of strips of belly, the pea meal variety is lean pork loin that's been brined and rolled in cornmeal. During the mid-1800s, Canada would export its pork to England, which was experiencing a shortage at the time. For preservation purposes, the pork was rolled in ground yellow peas, which is where the name pea meal comes from. Sometime later, the ground peas were swapped for cornmeal, but the name stuck, at least in Canada. For Americans, though, it will always be known as Canadian bacon. From Eggs Benedict to baked beans, the possibilities for pea meal bacon are endless. And you may already be a fan yourself, 
even if you're only just now learning about the correct name. The classically Canadian Caesar cocktail may be a drink instead of a food, but it's so often served with edible garnishes that we decided it was safe to count it, especially since it's basically a magic potion for curing a hangover. Sometimes known as the Bloody Caesar, this drink is made of vodka, clam juice, tomato juice, spices, and Worcestershire sauce. It's typically served in a highball glass that's been rimmed with celery salt and topped with any number of garnishes, from celery to olives to lime wedges to pickles to even shrimp or bacon. There are even versions complete with hot wings and onion rings, so make sure you have plenty of room in your belly. The Caesar really is a, uh, a, a national cocktail in Canada by parliamentary decree. The Caesar was invented in 1969 by restaurant worker Walter Chell, who was an employee of the Calgary Inn. As the inn prepared to open a new restaurant, Chell was asked to create a cocktail to commemorate the occasion. In 2006, the Caesar was ranked number 13 on the CBC TV show The Greatest Canadian Invention. Then, in 2009, it received a rather prestigious honor for its 40th anniversary, as Calgary Mayor David Brancagne declared that the Thursday before Victoria Day, every May, would be Caesar Day. Later that year, Canada Dry Mots launched an online petition to make the Caesar the official cocktail of Canada. And it would be a fitting distinction, as Canadians order more than 350 million Caesar cocktails every year. All we can say is cheers, but maybe hold the onion rings. If you're American, New York is probably the first place you think of when bagels come to mind. And that would be fair, as the Big Apple undoubtedly has some of the best bagels in the world. Chewy but never doughy, beautifully crusted with a glistening sheen, delicately tangy but never overpowering, New York bagels have earned their glowing reputation. But upon further investigation and research, you'll discover that they have a worthy rival up north in Montreal. While the two types have their similarities, the main difference is in the cooking process. Montreal bagels are first boiled in water that's been sweetened, usually with honey, whereas New York-style bagels are boiled without the sweet addition. Montreal bagels are also traditionally baked in a wood-fired oven, resulting in a richer, more flavorful crust. They're often a bit smaller than their sometimes massive New York cousins, and they're also traditionally studded with sesame and or poppy seeds. Another notable difference is the topping choice. While New Yorkers and lovers of New York-style bagels everywhere tend to top their bagels high with everything from cream cheese to fried eggs to lox, Canadians often enjoy their Montreal bagels plain, without adornment at all. With that delicious honey-induced sweetness already baked in, any topping would simply be superfluous. Um, and so as a Montrealer, you come to develop this strong attachment to bagels. There are a lot of sweet treats on this list, and for that reason alone, we're having a difficult time stopping ourselves from booking a one-way ticket to the land of maple syrup. In the meantime, we'll be salivating over our next Canadian confection selection, the Tarte à Souk, also known as sugar pie. Simple in all the best ways, this dessert happens to be a favorite of Canadian native and top chef judge Gail Simmons. It's filled with a mixture of cream, maple syrup, sugar, and lots of butter, then baked to golden perfection. As a holiday tradition in Quebec, many French-Canadian families consider the tarte au souk to be an integral part of their holiday meals. Served at the end of a festive feast, a slice of sugar pie is often topped with a simple luscious dollop of whipped cream, needing no further adornment. To paraphrase a certain classic Motown song, sugar pie, honey bunch, you know that we love you. We can't help ourselves. Whether you're talking about battering and frying something you've never thought about trying before, or whipping up a whole new dish that hails from half a world away, here are the fried foods you need to try before you die. Fries and pickles are perfect plate companions, so why not combine them into one amazing side? Serve your main dish with a side of fried pickles, and you'll find that they just might be even better than fries. You can use any cut of pickles, but make sure you pick a tangy, super crunchy dill pickle. Once they're beer battered and sprinkled with breadcrumbs, then deep fried, seriously, you'll never look back. Plus, they're perfect for dipping in the same sauce as you love with fried fish and chicken wings. Churros are just the right combination of crunchy on the outside and soft on the inside. And who doesn't love the combo of cinnamon and sugar? They're particularly perfect if you're looking for something light and tasty to serve after dinner, when everyone's sitting around with a cup of coffee or brandy. No one's really hungry anymore, but you're still craving dessert. That's when you need to try a churro. No summertime weekend is complete without hot dogs, but regular old hot dogs can get a little boring. If you want to serve up something that's familiar yet unique, dig out the deep fryer. If you throw a hot dog into the fryer and cook it until the skin gets super crispy and the casing breaks, 
you're actually whipping up the New Jersey favorite known as Rippers. Love hot dogs that snap? This is snap to the extreme. Or you could opt for beer battering your hot dog and then frying it, which is also pretty delicious. When it comes to scotch eggs, there are extremes. Get a badly made one and you'll wonder what the fuss is all about. It can be sort of like eating a rubbery tennis ball. But get a proper one and you'll know that this is what frying was invented for. Scotch eggs are basically hard-boiled eggs wrapped in sausage and then deep-fried. When it's done right, the entire thing holds together so you get it all in one bite. A crispy exterior, flavorful sausage, and a soft but solid egg all come together to change the way you think about breakfast. Everyone's had a donut, sure, but a beignet isn't your regular donut. You absolutely need to try a New Orleans-style beignet because they're not just a brilliant breakfast. They're brilliant any time of the day, particularly with a cup of coffee. Where a donut tends to be dense, these are flaky, light, and pillowy. Yeah. Beignets, uh -huh. got a fresh batch just waiting for you. <laughs> we'll keep them coming till I pass out. They're also usually covered with a healthy coat of powdered sugar. So bring a napkin and plan on eating more than one. The idea of deep-fried butter is certainly an artery-clogging nightmare for anyone who cares about their health in the least. We're not saying you should eat it all the time, but you should definitely give it a try. It's not just a stick of fried butter, it's actually butter that's been whipped until it's light and fluffy, then frozen and coated in a layer of dough. It's only then that it's deep fried and it's heavenly. Don't think of it as biting into a stick of butter. Think of it as a dough ball with a soft, melty, buttery center. It's actually sort of similar to a croissant, with the kind of crunch you only get from something that's fried. Fried green tomatoes are absolutely a southern classic. If you're anywhere outside of the American South, though, they sound a little weird and there's a good chance you've never had the chance to try one. Look at those bright green tomatoes! If you can find a comfort food restaurant that serves them up, do yourself a favor and put in an order. If you can't find them in a restaurant, just make them yourself. They're easy and they're absolutely a fried food you need to try before you die. As the name suggests, they're made with green tomatoes that aren't ripe yet. The green tomatoes have a firm texture and slightly sour taste that pairs extremely well with the crunchy fried coating. Think of them like oversized fried pickles, but maybe even better. Rosettes are traditional Scandinavian cookies, originally served around Christmas time. They're delicate deep fried creations that look more like something you'd hang on the tree rather than eat. They're as delicious as they are delicate, and everyone should try them at least once. And you can definitely make them at home with the help of a special rosette iron that gets heated, half coated in batter, then fried. If you want to spend a lazy afternoon making cookies one at a time, dusting them with sugar, and sharing something extra special at dessert, these are the cookies for you. Selling the idea of a vegetarian meal to a die-hard carnivore can be tough, but it doesn't have to be. If you're looking for a vegetarian dish that's packed with flavor and spice and has all the firmness and bite of a burger, give falafel a try. I stopped to get a falafel. Falafel has been around for centuries. It's a traditional food commonly seen in the Mediterranean, and while it was first made with fava beans and chickpeas, these days it's most commonly just the chickpeas. They're soaked, ground, and seasoned, then shaped into balls and deep-fried. Done right in super hot oil, you get a crispy outside and a firm but not oily inside. They're a flavorful, hearty main dish that's guaranteed to satisfy even the most skeptical meat eater. Serve with pitas, garnish with whatever veggies you like, and add a spicy sauce to top it all off. You'll have a meat-free meal that won't get any arguments. Who doesn't love mac and cheese? If you thought it was good on its own, you'll really love all that cheesy, gooey pasta once it's been deep-fried. If you can't find it on a menu near you, you can always fry it up at home. In fact, it's a great use for leftover mac and cheese. The trick is to use mac and cheese that's been chilled so it stays firm during frying. Take it out of the fridge and form it into balls or cut it into slices. Add some batter or breading, then toss your mac and cheese balls in the deep fryer. It really is that easy, and instead of that leftover mac and cheese with the questionable texture, you'll have delicious deep fried nuggets of cheesy goodness. Peanuts are a great snack, but the shells can be a bit annoying. It's not just that they're a ton of work, but they're messy too. There's a solution, deep fried peanuts. And yes, you fry them in the shell and everything turns out edible. Sounds too good to be true, right? It's not. Deep fried peanuts are popular in pockets of the US, particularly in the Carolinas. When the peanuts are deep fried, the shell stays crunchy but is safe to eat. Really, it sounds weird, but you really should try them. And you can absolutely make them at home with a handful of regular shell on peanuts thrown in your own deep fryer, preferably with peanut oil. Anyone who's ever seen a clip from Hell's Kitchen knows that risotto is a big deal. It's challenging to make, and once you make it, there's another challenge. What do you do with the leftovers? Because let's be honest, there's only so much risotto a family can eat. That's where arancini comes in. Arancini is a traditional Sicilian dish that likely came first from the Arabian world. It's delicious, and it's something everyone should taste at least once, whether you make it yourself or order it from your favorite Italian restaurant. 
It's essentially leftover risotto shaped into balls, then deep fried. There are also fillers added for extra flavor, and there's no right or wrong way to fill them. Pack your risotto around some cheese or ham and add some spices. It's not just a great way to use up the risotto, but other leftovers too. Toss them in some batter, fry them up, and you've got a super creative meal with no waste. You've probably had fried dough, right? But you probably haven't had zalabia, a Lebanese version of fried dough that's traditionally made from fermented dough and flavored with anise and sesame seeds. If you like licorice, you'll like zalabia. Even if you're not a licorice fan, though, give it a try. The anise flavor in zalabia is incredibly mild, and they smell as good as they taste. The only catch is that if you make them yourself, you want to make them right before you eat them. That's all right, because once you smell the sweet frying dough, you're not going to want to wait. Salads can get kind of boring, even the fun ones like caprese salads. But if you can mix that tired salad with something a little more exciting, like mozzarella sticks, that might change. If you're looking for a more exciting take on salad, then deep fried caprese is something you'll definitely want to try. It's got all the things you love about a caprese salad, but deep fried. And you know that makes every salad taste better. It's even pretty easy to make this one yourself if you like. Just scoop the innards out of small tomatoes, fill with mozzarella cheese, cover them in batter, and fry. Deep fried caprese balls are pretty much the perfect bite, especially if they're served with a balsamic dipping sauce. They'll take a little time to make, sure, but two or three per person is plenty for an appetizer, and they'll definitely become a family favorite. Everyone loves ice cream, and fried ice cream is even better. The warm and crispy shell surrounding the still-cold ice cream creates a creamy and delicious dessert that everyone should try at least once. You can often find this delight at your local Mexican restaurant. But if you can't, it's definitely possible to make it at home, and you definitely should try. Just scoop the ice cream into balls and pre-freeze them before frying so they're nice and hard. Roll the frozen ice cream balls in a mixture of crushed cornflakes and cinnamon, then drop them in hot oil. After about 10 seconds, you'll have a new favorite dessert to serve to guests. The classic fried dessert struffoli is traditionally made in Italy around Christmas, but there's no reason this can't be enjoyed at any time of the year. It's essentially marble-sized dough balls, carefully rolled, deep-fried, covered in honey, then arranged into a cone or wreath. They're great for parties, and they look fantastic displayed as part of a tablescape. But more than that, they're great for making when you have help in the kitchen. Rolling out the tiny dough balls of struffoli takes a long time and a lot of work, but it's the perfect job for kids who want to help in the kitchen. It's time-consuming but not difficult, and the experience of making it together will be a memory you'll all enjoy. Deep-fried foods have a reputation for being unhealthy, but there's no rule that says you can't deep-fry one of the healthiest foods out there. Avocados are high in vitamins and nutrients. They're full of healthy fats, and they can even help lower your cholesterol. So why not deep-fry them? Just coat slices or spears in egg and breadcrumbs and dunk them in the fryer. Leave them there until they float. If you love avocados, you can already imagine this is one seriously delicious side dish. Whip up a healthy yogurt-based dip to go with them, and you'll never have an avocado go to waste again. Deep-fried pizza sounds like a trendy new idea that someone came up with after a few too many beers. But according to some pizza chefs, they've been deep-frying pizza for generations because it's amazing. It isn't exactly what you think, and it's not as simple as throwing a whole pizza into a deep fryer. They essentially make the dough, shape it, then fry it in a pan. Then you add the toppings of your choice and serve it. The deep frying method gives you a pizza crust that's light, chewy, and infused with the flavor of whatever oil you're using. Opt for olive oil, don't go overboard on the toppings, and you can absolutely enjoy a deep fried pizza like generations of Italian families have. When most people think of Irish cuisine, they think potatoes, but it's not all just mash and chips. There's boxy too, and if you haven't tried this potato dish, you're missing out on a brilliant way to use up leftover mashed potatoes. We've all had leftover mashed potatoes in the fridge, and we've all experienced the disappointment of reheating them. Boxty is here to fix that. Mix some grated raw potato into your mashed potato until it's firm enough to form into a patty. Add some buttermilk if needed. Then just fry in a thin layer of butter or oil until they're golden. Top with anything from sour cream and chopped onions to a fried egg because they're great for any meal of the day, and you'll never throw out mashed potatoes again. You might even make too much on purpose, just so you can have these super versatile potato pancakes the next day. Zeppole are basically traditional Italian donuts, but they are so much more than that. They're often made to celebrate St. Joseph's Day, which also happens to be Father's Day in Italy. They're traditionally made with a yeast-based dough that can be shaped into a ball or into a fritter. And that's where the fun starts. They're not just plain or powdered sugar donuts. They're traditionally filled with custard, a pastry cream, or candied fruit and then they get the powdered sugar treatment. Of course, if you're making them at home, there's no limit to the sweetness you can add. Cherries, chocolate chips, whipped cream, and sweet ricotta are all completely acceptable when it comes to bringing a little bit of Italy into your kitchen. If you say you love Italian food, you should also be able to say you've tried these very traditional treats. Deep fried turkey may feel like just another food fad that came and went before you ever tried it. Most people never cook turkey outside of Thanksgiving, and the idea of deep frying a whole bird might feel a little dangerous. 
Why risk ruining the turkey on the one day of the year when you eat it? Oh my Seven, god, six, they're counting five, down! Four, three, two, one, two. But here's the thing, it's totally worth it. There are, of course, a whole list of safety precautions that need to be taken when you do this, but it's definitely worth picking up a turkey outside of Thanksgiving and giving it a shot. Do it right, and it's delicious. It's moist on a level that roast turkeys just aren't. And that crispy, crunchy skin that everyone loves? There's a lot of that. And now that there are fryers made specifically for frying turkeys indoors, you really don't have any excuse not to try it, do you? It might just change your Thanksgiving traditions forever. There are some words that seem like they should never be next to deep fried, and strawberry is definitely one of those words. But don't knock it until you've tried it, because they're delicious. Getting them right takes a little bit of effort. The batter should be thin, but not so runny it doesn't cling to the berry. The fry time should be short, and you'll have to eat them as soon as you make them. But when you do, you'll find that if there's a way to make strawberries better, this is it. Move over, chocolate-covered strawberries. You don't have anything on these. They might just be your new go-to romantic sweet treat. Sweet and juicy in the middle, crispy on the outside, dusted with powdered sugar, it's a summer afternoon in a single bite. Yes, leche frita translates from Spanish to fried milk, but it's actually a bit more complicated than that. This traditional Spanish dessert is more accurately described as milk thickened with cornstarch, flour, and sugar, and simmered with spices like cinnamon. It's then chilled overnight, sliced, battered, and deep-fried. In Spain, it's often made with regular cow's milk, but there's also a Chinese version that uses coconut milk instead. It's sweet and unique, and it's one of those things you'll just need to try to be able to describe. Some like it cold, some like it hot, some like it with coffee, and some with ice cream. It's versatile and just a little strange. Plus, what's better than the look on a guest's face when you say you're serving up some fried milk for dessert? The look on their face when they taste it, of course. Sure, potato-based fries are great, but what about pumpkin fries? Given just how popular the pumpkin spice latte is, it's safe to say that there are a ton of people out there who would appreciate all that pumpkin goodness served up alongside a burger. Pumpkin fries are super easy to make. Just slice a peeled pumpkin into fry-shaped spears, then deep fry. Load them up with all the pumpkin spice you could want, and that's it. And if that's not delicious enough, you'll also need to save the seeds. Deep fry those, too, and you'll not only have a delicious side, but a yummy snack for later. What's better than a creative side dish, pumpkin spice, and an after-dinner snack, all rolled up into one little pumpkin? When you're talking pie and you're looking for something different from the fruit-based pies you're used to, pecan pie is a great choice. It's full of nutty brown sugar, caramel goodness, and it's the pie to make when you're looking for something that's not your traditionally fruity dessert. If you love it, though, you need to go just one step further and deep fry it. The easiest way to do this is to break the pie into smaller pieces from the start. Instead of one big pie, make little folded hand pies. And then deep fry. The crunch is amazing, and the deep fryer really brings out the earthy, nutty flavor of the pecans. Serve them warm with some powdered sugar sprinkled on the top, and you'll never want regular old pecan pie again. Given that it's a discount store, Sands Club may not be the place you think of for top shelf cuisine, but the chain has some great finds on the shelves. Here are the Sands Club food items you absolutely need to try before you die. When Sam's Club launched the Members Mark Southern Spicy Style Chicken Sandwich in 2020, the internet pretty much lost its mind. Available in the frozen section, a chicken breast filet is coated in dill pickle-infused breading that is brought to the next level with a bit of cayenne. Customers swear that these taste just like their beloved Chick-fil-A sandwich. Lucky for us, it's about half the price of pulling up to the drive-thru and a whole lot less frustrating than waiting in a long line. The package comes with 10 fully cooked sandwiches that are ready to heat and eat. It's Sunday and you're nursing a wicked hangover. A Sam's exclusive Members Mark Southern Style Waffle Fries are good on their own or paired with the line spicy chicken sandwich. After just minutes in the air fryer, you'll swear these are the real deal. Each four pound bag makes about 21 servings, so you won't soon be going hungry. In 2018, Sam's Club debuted the Members Mark Southern Style Chicken Bites, and to say this created a wave of frenzy would be an understatement. These frozen, lightly breaded chicken bites have a swearing they are the real deal. Available in a generous three-pound bag, each bite features 100% white meat chicken that is coated in a crunchy breading infused with just a hint of dill pickle. If you're looking to get your fix while on the go, their Sam's Club Cafe also cooks up ready-to-enjoy orders. Sam's Club Cafe is dishing out some pretty legit pizza offerings, including their four meat pizza. While we're a fan of all of their pizza varieties, this version won us over and combines pepperoni, Italian sausage, ham, and bacon. Each of the meats are full of flavor in their own right, but work harmoniously together for an explosion of flavor, only made even better by the generous portion of cheese. 
You probably have your list of staples that you pick up on every visit to Sam's Club. Eggs, milk, cheese, and fresh produce are just a few items. But if this one isn't on your list, you'll thank us later. What is it? Cheesecake. What kind? Chocolate. Oh, I think this could be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. <laughs> If you grab one dessert from Sam's Club, make it their members' mark cheesecake miniatures. This restaurant-quality dessert comes in a variety pack featuring strawberry swirl cheesecake on a yummy graham cracker crust, a positively sinful caramel chocolate chip cheesecake on a chocolate cookie crust, and an unapologetically straightforward traditional New York-style cheesecake so good it can hold its own up to all the others. We're not going to lie, Sam's Club's bread and bakery items are totally delish. As the wonderful aromas of freshly baked goods waft past you, it could prove to be quite the challenge to escape without a cart full of these treats. Keep your eye on the prize, because you should be grabbing the Members Mark All Butter Sandwich Croissants. Available in a pack of 12 for less than 5 bucks, they seriously up your lunch game. Few can resist the allure of a churro, a staple of any visit to a theme park or county fairs. These desserts are generously coated in cinnamon and offer the perfect crunchy exterior with a softer cake-like interior. Sam's Club Cafe has pretty much nailed this signature dessert, no theme park ticket or Sam's Club membership required. Clocking in at a whopping foot and a half long, these double-twisted portable sticks of sweetness are a bargain any day of the week. Members Mark's soft sea salt caramels are handcrafted with real Madagascar vanilla, have stood the test of time, and for good reason. Salty meets sweet in this ultimate confectionery mashup that is wonderfully rich and buttery. They make the perfect dessert or an easy-to-grab mid-afternoon pick-me-up for less than 10 bucks. When Sam's Club reinvented their in-store brand, they set out to rise above their competition. They accomplished this by placing the focus on well-produced products that would have the average consumer rethinking the notion of store brand. Premium products debuted, and the new lineup launched with Italian-sourced olive oil and other handcrafted items, including members Mark Clover Honey. Working with a bee cooperative, this new product was the result of their partnership with hundreds of independent beekeepers. This exclusive product receives rave reviews from customers who note its wonderful taste and versatility. There's plenty of solid early morning starters to grab from Sam's Club, like their buttery croissants, cereal, and granola, but we're always going to go for the Members Mark Cinnamon French Toast Sticks. With a stellar rating on the Sam's Club website, these babies are a satisfying way to get your day going, with a nice kick of sugar and cinnamon. Charcuterie and cheese boards have been all the rage these last few years. If you're looking to step up your entertaining game, Sam's Club is a one-stop shop to design the board of your dreams with quality meats and cheeses. Our cheese of choice here is their Members Mark Chevre Fresh Goat Cheese Log. Made using American goat milk, the flavor is creamy with a bit of a punch, and it offers a gentle firmness that gives way to a crumbly texture. So, you've been to Napa a few times and all of a sudden your taste is elevated. We get it. But just hear us out on this one. Sam's Club upped its game in the liquor department, and their Members Mark line is nothing to turn your nose up over. Specifically, the Members Mark Sangria. Crafted in Spain, this fruit-forward concoction is an incredible bargain at less than $7 per bottle. Grab some fresh fruit from their produce section to slice up and now it's a party. You're going to have to break out your stretchy pants to prepare for this next one. The Edwards brand has been around since 1950, dazzling us with their ready-to-enjoy pies. The Edwards Hershey's Chocolate Cream Pie is a top-rated seller, and we can't argue with that. Available from Sam's Club, their signature chocolate cookie pie crust is made from freshly baked cookies that are taken out of the oven and immediately crushed to ensure the pie shell is as fresh as possible. Don't worry, lady, I'll have you cleaned off in a minute. The crust is then layered with a vanilla and chocolate filling. It's topped with whipped cream, Hershey's signature chocolate kisses, and a generous drizzle of chocolate. Sold frozen, it can be enjoyed by the slice or in its entirety. It's noted for its well-balanced flavor and light and airy texture. When deciding what to bring to your next get-together, a dip is usually a safe bet. Win over the crowds with Members Mark Buffalo-style chicken dip. The 28-ounce tub, which retails for under $10, is made from premium cheese, spicy cayenne, and juicy chunks of white meat chicken. It's everything you love about chicken wings, with the added convenience of being able to easily scoop it up. There's a good amount of spice found here, and the dip can be served cold or hot. If you love the flavor of hot sauce, you're going to love this one. If any vegetable has had a moment this last decade, it would be cauliflower. Seemingly overnight, every carb-loaded item you loved was transformed in a diet-friendly, low-carb version with no pizza or pasta spare. 
There are an overwhelming amount of passable versions, but we are loving the tattooed chef cauliflower mac and cheese. Without the sogginess found in other cauliflower pasta varieties, this starch-free dish is loaded with a cheddar cheese blend and even packed with protein. Grab this on your next Sam's Club run if you're looking for a ton of flavor that won't leave you feeling weighed down. Friends bring happiness into our lives, but best friends bring wine. If you're headed over to a buddy's place, you'll likely be picking something up on the way to present to your host. Sam's Club has their own members mark Chardonnay, part of their private label line, and it's shockingly good, and considering the fact that it's about eight bucks, worthy of adding to your regular rotation. With the fruit-forward flavor you'd expect from a good Chardonnay, this one is produced in Sonoma County, the top-growing region for the white wine variety. Color us impressed. This over-the-top creation from the folks at Sam's Club is also on brand with millennials' affinity for the mythical creature. We're talking about the trendy unicorn. Sam's Club jumped on board with the trend in their members' mark tiered unicorn cake. It's any rainbow lover's dream and available made to order from the warehouse's on-site bakery. With multicolored, glistening sprinkle layers, the entire cake is topped with, what else, a golden unicorn horn. The most shocking thing about this insta-worthy creation is that it's less than $70 for a cake that will serve over 60 people. The Kentucky Woods Bourbon Barrel Cake is truly the reason the phrase to die for was created. Available seasonally, usually around the holidays, this one can be found at Sam's Club and even its rival Costco. The base is made from a yellow and chocolate cake mix that is combined to create an almost marbled effect. It's not just any old cake mix. This mix is infused with bourbon extract, resulting in a really unique flavor with notes of maple and brown sugar shining through. It's topped off with a caramel drizzle and some walnuts. You'll have to enjoy the taste of bourbon as it is ever present, but it results in the most moist cake you've ever tried. The rotisserie chicken is usually a hot ticket item on any trip to a warehouse retailer. While Costco does a standout version, Sam's Club also offers a delicious bird. The members mark seasoned rotisserie chicken is made fresh daily on site. It's roasted to a golden brown and features a unique marinade, giving way to tender meat and wonderful flavor, thanks to their use of Lari's seasonings. Delicious on its own, it also works well shredded in salads, pasta, and even enchiladas. For less than five bucks, it's tender, full of flavor, and everything you'd want from a rotisserie chicken. Did you know that every Sam's Club is proud to have an on-site butcher? That's pretty legit. Since 2019, these butchers have been preparing USDA Prime beef, trimmed and ready for the consumer. If you're not familiar, USDA Prime is the highest grade given for beef, pretty much guaranteeing you're going to get a knockout product. The price can't be beat for their mouth-watering selection of ribeye steaks, strips, sirloin, and even tenderloin. The on-site butcher is also available on hand to answer any questions you may have. The only thing we love more than snacks are individually wrapped snacks. Noni's Almond Chocolate Biscotti is a win-win and an absolute pantry must. You can satisfy your sweet tooth without going overboard and eating the entire container. This artisan product will seriously one-up your cookie game. Perfect on its own or dunked into a cup of coffee, the biscotti is topped with almonds and then dipped in chocolate. It's an all-around quality product at an affordable price point, with a jar of 24 cookies setting you back just shy of $10. As the low-carb trend is still in full force, one snack has risen to the top of every must-have list for the keto follower. Parmesan crisps are a yummy snack on their own or a quick way to elevate any sad lunch salad. While there's now an endless sea of companies out there producing them, Sam's Club's version takes the cake. Members mark Parmesan Crisps takes 100% aged Parmesan and oven bakes it to crispy perfection. Naturally gluten-free, this protein-filled snack also offers a surprising 30% of your daily recommended calcium. Are you really living if you don't have a five-pound barrel of animal crackers stocked in your kitchen at all times? We think not. Members Mark Animal Crackers are a beloved Sam's Club treat for the young and young at heart. They also have the added bonus of being low in fat with zero grams trans fat. So basically, it's a healthy snack option. Full of flavor, each jar features 11 different adorable little animal shapes. Potato pancakes, soda bread, and seafood chowder. There's a lot to Irish food beyond corned beef and cabbage. What other iconic dishes do you need to try? Keep watching for a breakdown of the best Irish cuisine. Let's start with boxty, also known as the potato pancake. It's made by mixing both grated and mashed potatoes with milk, eggs, flour, and butter for a half pancake, half hash brown patty that's fried on the griddle until it's perfectly crispy on the outside and soft on the inside. 
Boxty is quintessentially Irish because it celebrates the humble spud in all its glory. Potatoes have been a staple in Ireland for centuries and in many ways shaped the entire trajectory of the country. According to Potatoes USA, they arrived in Ireland in the late 1500s when Sir Walter Raleigh planted the country's first spud in County Cork on a 40,000-acre estate given to him by Queen Elizabeth I for his role in suppressing a rebellion. As fate would have it, potatoes were exceptionally well-suited to Irish soil, and as their numbers exploded, so did Ireland's population. It skyrocketed from 1.2 million in 1590 to 8.4 million in 1841, and more than half of Irish citizens, primarily the rural poor, came to rely almost exclusively on potatoes for their daily nutrition. Today, box tea is far from peasant food. Entire restaurants and cooking competitions are dedicated to it. And you can find people eating box tea for breakfast with bacon and eggs, or even for dinner or dessert. Pancakes! Pancakes! Potato farls are another tasty dish the Irish devised to use potatoes. The classic recipe calls for just three simple ingredients — mashed potatoes, flour, and melted butter. And the resulting dough is thick enough to hold its shape as it's rolled into a thin, flat circle, cut into fourths, and fried for a few minutes on each side. While potato farls might sound similar to box tea, there are a few key differences. Box tea contains grated potatoes, making them more reminiscent of a hash brown, while potato farls use mashed potatoes only for a smoother, more bread-like texture. That makes them the perfect stand-in for toast, served for breakfast alongside bacon and eggs to mop up the last bits of yolk. When you eat a whopping 65 spuds a day, you better know how to make killer mashed potatoes. And since the average Irish adult in 1844 did just that, they've certainly answered the call. Rich and buttery Calcana is an Irish mashed potato recipe made with milk, butter, leeks, and cabbage. It's so ubiquitous throughout the country that you can often find its recipe printed on sacks of potatoes. While we'd eat these mashed potatoes any day of the week, they were traditionally served during Samhain, a Celtic festival celebrated on October 31st. If that date sounds familiar, it's because Samhain is the inspiration behind Halloween. Trick or treat! Trick or treat. One of four Celtic festivals of the year, Samhain signified the time when the veil between worlds was so thin that spirits and fairies could return to the land of the living. As described by Food & Wine, food played a major role in the festival, and Kalkanen was one of several traditional Irish dishes used to dabble in a little fortune-telling. Small charms were hidden throughout the potatoes and said to predict the diner's future. A coin meant wealth was on the way, a ring meant you were soon to be married, and a thimble, well, let's just say you better buy a cat because you're in for life as a spinster. While we're on the topic of Samhain, let's talk about barmbrack. Barmbrack is a sweet Irish fruit loaf traditionally made with raisins. In its early days, barmbrack was made with yeast, but many recipes today will use baking soda for ease. Much like Kalkanen, barmbrack used to be reserved for Samhain and, if you were lucky, might have given you a peek into your future. Remember, those little charms hidden in Kalkanen? They made an appearance in barmbrack, too. Today, barmbrack recipes include all kinds of different fruits, from cherries to candied orange peel and everything in between. However you try it, we highly recommend pairing it with a cup of tea for maximum enjoyment. Soda bread is another iconic Irish bread, one you'll find at breakfast, lunch, and dinner tables across the country on a regular basis. Each family has their own favorite recipe, and they can be savory or sweet, use wheat flour or white flour, contain raisins, currants, or no fruit at all. What makes them all soda bread isn't that they're made with soda pop, because they aren't. Soda bread is called soda bread because it's leavened with baking soda. Irish soda bread came about during the famine that hit Ireland in the 1840s because yeast became exceedingly difficult to get, and soda bread could be made with just a few essential ingredients — flour, baking soda, buttermilk, and salt. It's the reaction of the acid in the buttermilk and the base of the baking soda that makes the bread rise. Irish soda bread is one of those foods that shines on its own, so it's best served simply with some high-quality Irish butter. And let me say this. Is there anything better than butter? Shepherd's pie is more like a casserole than a pie. Traditional recipes use lamb and vegetables like onions, carrots, and peas, all topped with a layer of, you guessed it, creamy mashed potatoes, acting as the pie's crust. While shepherd's pie actually originated in Scotland, Masterclass notes Ireland was the first to use mashed potatoes rather than a pastry crust. Before that, it would have been more akin to a classic pot pie. Like many of Ireland's most traditional foods, shepherd's pie was born of frugality. It was an easy way to use leftover meat from the week before and any vegetables you happened to have on hand for a warm, comforting meal. Today, many of the shepherd's pie recipes you'll see use ground beef. Technically, this is a cottage pie as opposed to a shepherd's pie. They're essentially the same thing. There's also something called a Cumberland pie that uses chunks of beef instead of ground. 
Black and white puddings are a quintessential part of a traditional Irish breakfast. Served alongside baked beans, over easy eggs, bacon, sautéed mushrooms and tomatoes, toast, butter, and lots of tea. Both are sausages made with some combination of a grain like oatmeal or barley, breadcrumbs, spices, and ground pork meat or liver. Some also include animal fat and, especially in Ireland, additional binders like potato flour to help keep them together. Black pudding is especially unique because it includes the addition of pork or beef blood to give it a stronger color, flavor, and additional nutrients. While recipes vary widely, Taste of History notes that black pudding, or blood sausage, has been eaten around the world for centuries. It was even mentioned in Homer's Odyssey and has recipes dating back to the 4th century. Since most prized meat cuts in Old Ireland were reserved for the rich, black and white puddings gave rural Irishmen something nutritious to do with blood and offal, or organs, so nothing went to waste. They've stood the test of time and remain an iconic Irish food to this day. Traditional Irish stew is made with just a few simple ingredients – mutton, potatoes, onions, and sometimes carrots. Irish stew became a staple for poor Irish families in the early 19th century, when potatoes were a huge part of a traditional Irish diet and economic turmoil created mass poverty. All they needed to create a nourishing, hearty meal was a hanging pot, a fire, and a few staple ingredients they were likely to have on hand. Today, Irish stew is often made with a lamb, a more tender alternative to mutton. Mutton comes from sheep that are more than a year old, whereas lamb comes from sheep that are under a year old. When times were lean, Irish farmers would keep their sheep around for as long as possible to reap the benefits of their wool and milk, so using mutton for their stew made more sense. That said, mutton can be much tougher meat than lamb, so cooking it for a long time, as in a stew, was a must. We both love soup. Dublin Coddle is also known as the City Man Stew because it became popular with Dublin's working class in the late 18th century. During Ireland's first Great Famine, many Irishmen moved from the countryside to the city looking for work. And while they couldn't bring their sheep, they could bring their pigs. So as culinary lecturer Martine Macon Lomé of the Dublin Institute of Technology told the Dublin Inquirer, Dublin Coddle became a, quote, city man's Irish stew that used sausages and rashers instead of mutton and lamb. The key ingredients in a Dublin Coddle are pork sausage, British bacon, potatoes and onions simmered in stock for several hours or even overnight. The stock can be chicken, beef, water, milk, whatever was on hand was what went into the pot. Just as delicious today as it was back then, Dublin Coddle is perfect for the end of a long day's work, because you can start it in the morning and it's ready by dinner. All this talk of potatoes and mutton might have you thinking that's all Ireland has to offer, but that's far from the truth. Let's not forget it's the Emerald Isle, so it's only fitting that it's known for some pretty delicious seafood dishes, too. Irish seafood chowder is the perfect example. Following the tradition of using the foods on hand and in season, Irish seafood chowder can include fish, prawns, lobster, mussels, whatever is caught fresh from the sea. Some recipes call specifically for smoked salmon, which isn't surprising given Ireland is known for some of the best salmon in the world. Seafood chowder is cooked in a base of cream, milk, and wine, with vegetables like leeks, onion, fennel, celery, and yes, potatoes mixed in. Seafood chowder is so popular in Ireland that Kinsale County Cork hosts an all-Ireland chowder cook-off every year and thousands come from far and wide to see who takes the crown. It's great. It's great for Kinsale. It's great for the town. The sun is shining. Dexter cattle are native to the Kerry region of southwestern Ireland. They're a sturdy breed in a smaller-than-average package and have evolved to survive in oftentimes harsh, shelterless mountain landscapes. In fact, they're so hardy, Butcher Magazine says they rarely require veterinary attention and can be left to graze the fields all year long, making them really and truly free-range. But back to their size. Don't let it fool you. They might be one of the smallest cattle breeds in the world, but their contribution to Irish culture is immense. Not only were they revered by rural farmers for their efficient milk production and ability to thrive even on low-quality land, they also worked as draft animals and continue doing so today. That makes them one of the few tri-purpose cattle breeds still in existence. And if you're wondering what a draft animal is, it's any domesticated animal that can be used to pull heavy loads, an incredibly valuable resource for farm work before the invention of modern machinery. But back to the beef. Dexter beef has a unique spider-like marbling that makes it more tender than other types of beef, and its smaller size means its steaks will be thicker than those cut from a larger animal. If that wasn't enough to convince you that you need to try it, Dexter beef also provides more omega-3 fatty acids because of the time these cows spend grazing the fields. We'll end our list with a dish that's a little more modern but no less iconic, 
The Crisp Sandwich, a salty, crunchy creation made with two pieces of white bread, Irish butter, and a generous handful of potato chips. A favorite at the end of a long night or when you need a snack in a hurry, crisp sandwiches are lovingly referred to by Irish Central as an Irish delicacy. And while we'd like to say they're easy to replicate at home, there is apparently quite a hot debate going on as to whether a crisp sandwich made without a very specific brand and flavor of potato chips, potato cheese and onion, is even a crisp sandwich at all. Meanwhile, in Ireland says using the cheese and onion flavor from Tato or another Irish brand, King, will make or break your sandwich, and straying from those specific instructions will leave you sorely disappointed. Still, if you're willing to risk a subpar version, you can make your own crisp sandwich at home by picking up your favorite bag of chips and sandwiching them between two slices of white bread slathered in butter. Just make sure you use Irish butter, which thankfully isn't nearly as hard to come by here as Tato's.